This is yet another episode of movies with me, Lorez Wants the Bread, and a now completely bald Hans. <laughs> now we were talking about this just before recording, but really, what what inspired you to go all the way and just get rid of the sides? I had it at number two, and it started to grow out, and it looked really stupid. So I thought I'll just go to zero. So I just did that, and then after the first line, I was like, oh, it's too late now. So I just do the whole thing, and I'm just very shiny now. Yeah, when you grow your hair out, you have like a Jack Torrance, Jack Nicholson circa 1977 yep. look. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's gone. Back for, I think this is the fourth episode you've been on now, Jake. Yeah, man, I think so. Uh, Jake Hanrahan of Popular Front. You've been doing the rounds this week, it seems like. <laughs> yeah. I said on Twitter, I was like, I'm really fucking bored. Someone please have me on their podcast just to talk about something. Um, and all of the replies were kind of war stuff, which was a bit tiring. So, like, all I do is talk about war. But, yeah, man, I've just been fucking losing my mind in lockdown, man. I hate it. <coughs> Have things loosened up at all over there? Well, our government just had, like, this bizarre, like, speech yesterday. Um, and we're all still a little bit, like, don't really know what he meant. Um, like, the new, the new catchphrase is... is um, stay alert <laughs> contain the virus save lives and you know no one really like stay alert how like the 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 like leader of scotland she's really funny and she's like really upfront. and someone asked her about it and she's like yeah i have no idea what it means <laughs> so like a lot of people are very confused uh our country has dealt with it like appallingly so yeah man i mean to be honest you can go out as many times as you want as long as you're not an idiot you know what I mean? Like, the rule is twice, but I go out as many times as I need. But then you've got idiots that are, like, having a fucking house party. So, obviously, they get in trouble. But, yeah, it's all right. And, Hans, what's it been like over there for you? I know that, uh, what, you, you had some employment issues or something, right, because of this? Some, some what? Some employment issues or something regarding this? Uh, no, I just, I, I got a job where I was making no money and I was hating it. So, I just quit. But, uh... Costa Rica has, has actually dealt with it really well, um, and uh, I think they're starting to up and everything up. Like I, <clears throat> I know that one of the biggest movie theaters that we have here is opening this week, I think. And what they're doing is keeping like six or seven feet in between people. And wait, what are they going to show? I, I have no idea. I have no idea how that's going to work. Uh, I don't know who's going to risk it and like who's dying to watch a movie in a theater <laughs> to the point where they're willing to risk their health to go to especially when there's nothing out that you're like oh right well fuck i need to see the next i don't know iron man 7 or whatever there'll be but, some um, like there'll be some cinema guy that's just like i have to go it's you know what i mean just on his own now i i mean this i miss the smell of this stinky ass seats because the one that's opening is like the oldest theater that we have here uh but uh, -huh. uh people i was have, the air conditioning i've uh, oh you've never been i don't know i, I imagine it's like I, I i watched a special where uh over in fiji they have like one theater and they just play the three stooges like it's like it just came out like it's 1925 and i imagine that's what they do there yeah they probably play casablanca <laughs> and gone with the wind no no we have malls and shit uh but we have a, like even like um short film festivals that like 10 people go to uh but yeah I, they're 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 reopening everything so uh it seems like things are going back normal here, which is really weird to me because there's no vaccine or anything. So what's the... What's but the what is here? normal in Costa Rica? I mean, we talked about human trafficking. There's fires. There's storms. Yeah. No, this is just like another day for you, right? I just mean like being able to leave the house and not feel guilty, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I have a supermarket like 10 minutes away from my house. So uh, that's the only place that I've gone to in the past, what, two months? Uh, but yeah, it seems that shit's going back to, you know, everyone leave their house. Um, our government mm -hmm. didn't really do much to help people. Uh, so, uh, we're a country that depends on tourism. And so yeah, things are good. <laughs> things are not as bad as they should be, I guess, over here. Well, the movie we're going to be talking about primarily tonight, I think is popular, uh, mainly because of the result of the virus. I don't think as many people would be talking about it right now if that weren't the case. You know, I had said uh, when I had learned that Amazon Prime was releasing South by Southwest selections, if I had gotten into the festival, if I was one of those filmmakers, I'd be furious right now that it 
just got uh, pushed to prime of all places. But uh, I think directly because of that, this movie, this documentary we're going to be talking about, TFW, uh, No GF, is like a big cultural thing at the moment because it's so readily available to everybody for free. Yeah, I think that's right. Like, no one would have seen it otherwise, really, you know. it's that Which is mm-hmm. weird. Like, the whole um, circuit of festivals and that doesn't make much sense to me. It feels like no one really gets to see it apart from... I, I get it, it's because of distribution deals, but I don't know why it has to be just just with that. You know, it can like you know that face that feel when no girlfriend is still going to be distributed surely. And I, I don't think there would be much difference between the method of release. Probably, I can't imagine a real distributor picking up this kind of mm. movie. And yet, right now, I've seen it come up as uh, fodder for reviews on tons of movie podcasts and you know website. I think the New York Times yeah. reviewed it. Like Rolling they're Stone. treating it like it's a. It's kind of kind of wild. Yeah, people are very angry about it. Quite a lot of people are very angry about it. Like a lot of uh, film, you know, film critic Twitter people are very angry angry about it, which is funny. Well, th- I think they take a look at anything regarding <laughs> the like online subcultures with a, a specific kind of lens. Like they're coming from it, like oh, Star Wars trolls. This is the same type of people as that, or people that don't like the Marvel movie or whatever it might be. So they're just like automatically putting that kind of uh, burden uh, or, or similarity on the shoulders of these people. But, you know, uh, you picked this movie out. I haven't let a guest pick a movie out in ages. That was, that was, that was back in the, uh, the old days of this show. I'd say, oh, you just pick a movie. And then uh, when I realized, oh, you know, if I'm talking about Annihilation, I don't really care about this movie. I don't have much to say. Fuck, how do I push this to an hour? Uh... Um, you know, I kind of quit that. I thought this might be the case with this film. I don't know if I have a whole lot to talk about you it here tonight. Me. Uh, <laughs> <I> hang up. <laughs> yeah. Why did you want to talk about this movie, Jay? Fuck knows, man. I don't know. Like, I just saw it. I don't know. It's been two weeks since you yeah, picked it I'm, out. I'm, so. Yeah, I'm starting to think like maybe it wasn't a good idea. Um, I don't know. I, I watched it and I thought that like it could have been so much better. It felt like a rough cut of a film. Um, but mm-hmm. also, I just thought that I saw a lot of people talking about it um online and i saw there was kind of like an online uh you know buzz around it so i thought maybe that was a good idea for us to talk about it because you know yeah. just because trying to trying to ride that buzz i guess but also like i found it quite interesting um and i thought it was quite good in a lot of ways and really bad in a lot of others it was a weird f- you know was a, i haven't watched something like that for a long time where i've gone like that bit was really really good and then i've just been like that the way they execute that was fucking terrible there was also this thing where, like, a lot of people are saying, "Oh, it's an incel doc," and I, I didn't even really right. feel that it was an incel documentary personally. So I was quite confused by that. So yeah, we could do a different film if you want. Yeah, let's just pick a different <laughs> film on the fly. Ten minutes in, why not? No, the the other movie that I sent to you, which I don't, even, I, you can't even really call it a movie. It's like a short yeah. documentary that went on Vimeo. Uh, Shy Boys IRL. I feel like a lot of the people approaching this movie. Are uh, are are looking at it like it's that movie, and it it couldn't be further from it. In my yeah, opinion. there's there's a few elements of Shy Boys IRL in um, that feel when no girlfriend, but I, I think that things have just jumped ahead so much more. There wasn't really the culture of the incel stuff like involved right. um, in this one. You know, in the newer doc, I don't think it was the newer doc for me. Like. That face with no girlfriend was was I keep saying face that feel it was to me it was more like uh, a doc about lonely loneliness online on the edges of like weird internet circles rather than just in seldom yeah and in the shy boys uh, documentary that was probably around like 2011 2013 they might have been filming it around 2011 and it feels very outdated at this point like all the guys are very cartoonish in that and that's not the case with uh, this documentary and also i think they were all on a form like a proper message board. yeah that's right like pro boards you know hans um if you could describe this new documentary uh just to, for whoever doesn't know about it yet why don't you do that right now well, hans go ahead you want me to get in tr- yeah you want me to get in trouble with that online community and <laughs> say something yeah, just- <laughs> say something mean no um it it felt like a 
like an incomplete project to me. Uh, I feel like we yes, didn't, yeah, we didn't re- we didn't really see much. We we get like a very shallow portrait of uh, this group of men that are disillusioned and that are unwilling to fight for anything and just willing to just you know keep going with whatever it is that's going on. Not no willing to get better at anything or or expect anything from their own life because all they do is just feel sorry for themselves. But then that's it. I kept expecting something to happen, and uh, and then it just ended. So uh, you expect it to end like Joker? <laughs> something. <laughs> Show me something interesting. I don't know. It's it's like, yeah, they they get uh, depressed and then they go online and they're mean to people, but they're mean because they're sad. It's like, all right, that's it. Like that, that's that's all. I got. Well, what, hold on. But were any of them explicitly mean to people, or were they just making crude jokes? They're just shitheads. Yeah, yeah, they're like um, edgy, edgy. The problem is, I yeah. I feel that like a lot of what they say online wasn't included. Now there was some bits, but it was only when it was like relevant. So like Vidi's brother, when he was like, you know, he's like, I'm gonna go and shoot someone. You know, like they they, they said the police turned up and took his guns because of a tweet. But I feel like there's a hell of a lot of nasty shit that them lot have been involved in. Not so much Vidi and them guys, but you know, other people from different communities, and it's like. I feel like the filmmaker left a lot of the nasty stuff out and also assumed a lot of knowledge. So, you know, I was watching this and I know just because I'm a nerd and I'm in, you know, involved in, or just I watch like very online stuff. I was like, oh, I get that reference. I get this reference. But I felt like a film should be for everyone, even if you don't know the topic, right? Especially a documentary. And mm-hmm. it felt to me that like anyone that's not involved in these very online circles is going to be lost. You know what I mean? Like very lost. Um, like they, they, the way they even, you know, Alec Manassian is mentioned and no one really, ex- I don't, if I remember right, they don't even explain who he is other than like maybe one sentence, you know, and that's that guy that fucking, the incel guy that ran a load of people over and killed them in Canada. Um, I think it was. So yeah, some of it was like mess, yeah, was messed up. Yeah. Right. Like they barely even like egg white has a song about it. Like running, I think it was like running bitches down. Like Alec Manassian is the line and they play it and there's no real, yeah. It just, it's like if, it, yeah, it felt like you had to be in on the joke, which I get it. Yeah, the it's filmmaker like the, wanted to make it for them, but it's not, nah. They're, they're expecting you to already know all of it. Maybe that's why I was kind of bored by it because I'm yeah. really not in that world at all. Like, I, I had no idea yeah, who any of old. these people were. Yeah, I'm, I'm like an old person uh, when it comes to this <laughs> online circles or whatever. But, uh, yeah, maybe that's one of the reasons why I couldn't really get into it just because I had no idea who they were talking about and I was kind of lost at times. I just thought it was just, you know, uh, shithead kids that are sad being shitheads on the internet and that, that's it. Didn't I couldn't agree more with the both of you that it felt like shoddily pieced together and I think it relied a little too heavily on pre-existing media. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that would have been a great... Actually, no, I don't even know if it would have been a great YouTube documentary. I think it's only good or interesting because of the context that it's been placed in, which is South by Southwest entry. I think if you remove that and it's just something that somebody uploaded to YouTube or Vimeo, nobody gives a shit. Uh, like I, I, and I'm watching this and I, I feel like, okay, well, what, do you, what exactly is trying to be communicated here through these vignettes of uh, these men? And, you know, I wouldn't even put somebody like Cantbot, uh, who's probably the, like the star, the breakout star of this piece, um, with the three other guys who seem very like just lost and don't even really know who they are or, or, or have like any, anything of value to offer the world that they've discovered in themselves yet. Um, I think it also relies a, a little too heavily on um, Prince of Zimbabwe animations that I've seen on YouTube like a million mm-hmm. times. If I'm just some like random old lady like that one at the beginning of the documentary who was talking, who I thought was the director at first, I was like, whoa, this, this woman's very online. For her <laughs> yes, <I am>. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's not her. Um, if I'm somebody like that and I see all this and I don't know how to process it, but it's a different perspective than maybe what Trevor Noah is, is putting out there or reinforcing, then uh, maybe I'm like, all right, yeah, it, this is just good enough to get through and maybe offer something of interest here to this kind of crowd. Yeah, it felt like a rough cut to me. You know what I mean? It felt like someone had made the bare bones of a film and then you go, right, now we need to we need to watch this to know what we need more of. You know what I mean? I felt like that was what yeah. it was. And 
it just felt like it could have been so good. I think that's why I was quite interested in it because I was like, man, this could have been so, so good, but it just wasn't, you know? I mean, it was fine, but yeah, there was there was good scenes. Like, for example, that scene where with that Vidi guy and his brother when they just go to the forest and start shooting loads of guns and they play that, like, you know, I think it's uh, Cop Killer by John Mouse, like great little scene mm -hmm. and it just works. And then it was just like on to the next thing. And it just, I was like, it didn't really work because it wasn't attached to anything. It was like they had a good idea. You can't just go, that looks cool, put that together, and then we'll just yeah. stick that there. <laughs> like it has to have something to carry on with it and fit in. You know what I mean? It was honestly, that bit was like, oh, sick. Like that's a very cool sequence. And then, then, then it would just skip to some other guy that was nothing to do with either of them. And I was like, what? Like, I don't know. It felt very um, disjointed. I feel like they didn't know what the dock was even at the end of it. I think Campbot says it at the end of it. Yeah. He's like, what even is this dock? What are you doing? Like, which fair play to the filmmaker for including that kind of stuff. But I don't know. It's right in a way. Like, he's he's a strange character as well, you know? Like, he's very, like you say, I don't think, he's not an incel for a start. Like, I think the guy's fucking married. And also, he's not like, uh, yeah, he's, he's just more like a troll. Like, you know, he doesn't really mean much of what he says. They play that clip of him talking about fucking Trump is going to raise up Atlantis. You know, but it's kind of funny because yeah. some some critics are like, well, there's this crazy kid and he believes in Atlantis. Like, yeah, that's quite funny because people are taking too much of it seriously. But it is meant to be mm -hmm. a serious doc. So it's very confusing. You know what it kind of reminded me of? Uh, uh, Idob's documentary he did about that fat kid, uh, Full Force or Going Full Force or something that he did. Uh, I, I, I don't, I don't uh, watch so he, Idubs. I don't he, keep up he, with that. Yeah, okay, we're, so we're he did a, cool to watch either. Sorry. He, did, <laughs> yeah. he did a documentary about this fat kid who makes uh, videos of himself fighting with a lightsaber with his friend. And he went down to Georgia or wherever the fuck that, that kid lives and spent like three days with him and just recorded him on like his mm -hmm. everyday life. And it's just this really disgusting fat kid that's just, you know, <laughs> not very bright because of where he's from and like his mom doesn't care and he's just eating shit and just it was like a like a uh mm -hmm. biographical portrait that he did of this kid but we don't really get that deep into it it's very much like this where it's like the reason why he does this is because of this and i feel like this documentary didn't go even deep enough to do that uh, it, it was kind of like let me show you this thing that this person said at this time and this is why they said it and then let's move on to the next person and we don't really get a, a real explanation as to who, why this person did that. It's just, you know, they were upset because this or this is this. But it, it, it wasn't deep enough to keep your uh, interest for the whole time, especially for someone like me that's an outsider, like we mentioned. Mm. But it just, it, it felt very shallow. And then when it ended, you're just uh, sitting there like, oh, okay, so I guess, no, so nothing changed. So the only one that got a girlfriend was this guy, uh, Jonah Hill. What's his name? <laughs> no, that yeah, you, you're, you're, you're confused. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because because he said I have a girlfriend now or whatever at the yeah, end yeah. of the documentary, right? And that's it. Like we don't get closure or anyone else. We don't really get that much information. It felt like a very incomplete portrait of this disillusioned young man that you know are sad. Mm. And do you think do you think that that might be viewed as something beneficial? Toward the documentary by the people viewing it i'm talking like the mainstream documentary audience because of the fact there have been so many documentaries especially lately uh dealing with like the current time period that hammer home narratives so hard yeah that i think that's a good point it's like i do miss the old days of docs when you could just have a doc that was a bit weird and it was it didn't really need wrapping up there was no template um which i liked about this one like but you do need some structure, you know, there was such little structure that it was like, this isn't really abstract or weird or spooky. It's just not finished. Yeah. You right. know, it was a bit annoying, but I, I do think that there's something about the, you know, the kind of time period we're in and the, the boring, everyone's so boring. Everybody's snitching on each other. You're not allowed to say this. You're not allowed to say that. It was interesting that this doc was even allowed to be made and put up at South by Southwest. That quite interested me. Like these are people culturally now, you're not allowed to talk to, you know, it has to be, unless you have to talk at them or about them, but you're not actually allowed to talk to them because suddenly you're, I don't know, enabling some bullshit, you know, all that boring shit that people say. So 
That was quite interesting. I think that showed maybe you couldn't have made this doc like three years ago when they started filming. That was at the height of like cancelling everything. I think the doc would have been screamed at and took and took down. Like literally, you're not allowed to talk to someone from 4chan on a doc. That's not fair. Now people give a fuck less, you know. Um, but I don't know. It was that that was interesting. I think. Let me just compare compare it to something that I watched recently. Like yes, yesterday I think I I finished watching that Tiger King documentary, which is. Uh, uh it, it the reason why i feel like it it happens the same thing that happened with the with this uh what's it the feeling what is it that feeling no <laughs> that feeling Whatever. when no girlfriend yeah yeah uh that if we weren't in quarantine and all stuck at home i don't think as m much people would have seen it uh but the the difference with this tiger king thing is that in that show they show you so many crazy things and the story goes in so many different ways that it keeps you engaged even mm -hmm. though mm -hmm. you know at the at the end of it there's not really a resolution there's kind of a mystery there that doesn't really tell you that much but it's the journey of those seven episodes that uh you know you get enough interesting things and it goes in deep enough into the stories where you're engaged and you want to watch the next one uh, with this documentary, I don't feel like it got deep enough into anything for you to even care about anyone that, you know, they're talking about. Uh, it, it it felt like very, very shallow. And then since most of the interactions happen online, there's not really much that you can show other than a screen and mm. other than the messages and the memes. So there's not really even that. Uh, it, it's not visually interesting and the story is not interesting enough for you to just get glued to it because most of it is oh look at what this guy said on this website so it's a it's a screenshot of a screen and that's it when it comes to tiger king uh it's every episode and every 15 minutes it's like a crazier thing or this <laughs> yeah, crazy yeah. character or this crazy something that it makes you want to watch more with this one by the end of it i was like okay cool like i had no feelings i had no hey i wonder what this guy's doing now i wonder what you know, this guy or this other one, I, I didn't really care about anyone just because they didn't show me enough of those characters or their life for me to even warn them about, you know, are these guys still shooting guns in the woods whenever they have, you know, free time or whatever other thing they did. Nothing they showed me about them was interesting other than, you know, I'm going to sit here and feel sorry about myself. Uh, so I guess that's that's one of the reasons why I couldn't engage with it. Uh, Tiger King was fine. I... I I think the hype of it, I don't know if you guys have seen it, but it's yeah. mostly because it's its just crazy rednecks. And every crazy redneck that's introduced, it's crazier than the last redneck. So yeah, it's its entertaining, but that that's the biggest difference between those two. With that one, you're kind of wondering, okay, what's the next crazy shit that they're going to show me? In this one, where you have this bunch of young men saying outrageous things online or or whatever you want to call it, it's difficult to care about them because all they're showing you, it's a screen with uh, text and that's it. So you can't really connect with any of them. Uh, even if your, your upbringing is similar to them and maybe you, you can kind of identify with one of those characters, they don't really show you enough for you to be like, hey, I, I've gone through that or whatever. It's just this guy is whining and, and uh, reaching online to strangers. Uh, so I guess that's one of the reasons why I just I couldn't connect with it at all. Even though you know my upbringing was kind of similar to some of them, I was kind of like, oh, that's that was kind of like my my early teen years were kind of similar to this guy, but it just wasn't enough for me to to uh, even get interested in their life at all. So that mm. connection there with the audience, uh, like you said, you would have to be really informed and in, or be very involved into this world to care. And even then, like I don't, I, I don't think they showed anything that will make you want to see, you know, part two. Let's say. Well, maybe, maybe then a part of the film is like that. It shows maybe how hopeless it all is for them. You know, the the fact that you don't really like. I think it if with Tiger King, right? So apart from the fact that the filmmaker exaggerated everything, yeah, I tell you one yeah. thing as well. He left out the fact that Joe Exotic is like massively racist. And he filmed him saying oh, yeah. like racial slurs all the time, and he cut all of that out apparently to basically make you like him, right? Like, because no one likes a fucking racist. So, yeah, I think with like with uh, that face when that feel when no girlfriend is that like they're so unlikable, <laughs> you know? Yeah. They're just such un like their hopelessness is that they're just like they're pathetic, frankly. You know, I do. There's part of me that felt bad for them at the start. 
Because it's like, you know, like, I mean, I've never been a fucking incel, but I've certainly, certainly right. am like lonely and shit. You know what I mean? Mm. But then at a point it was like, okay, these guys are just pathetic. They're not trying to yeah. do anything better, you know? But then also, then I was like, well, it's sad that they don't feel like there's any reason. They just are like, what's the point? I mean, there's plenty of points. Or, there's lots of cool things to do in life, but it's sad that they got to that point, you know? It kind of felt like they didn't have someone to just be like, oh, fucking shut up and get on with it. <laughs> yeah, you know? exactly. The, the, yeah. The, the, the guy wearing the um, jean jacket and jeans, like the, the uh, cowboy guy. Yeah, um, all the rings. He would, he would just sit up, apart from everyone and just be sad. <laughs> and I just wanted to be like, can you fucking snap out of it? Like, that's it. Like, yeah. they're healthy. Maybe they're not the smartest people in the world. You don't have to be to be successful. You know, mm. you can learn a trade. You can learn something and get it. And I don't know if it's part of the of the whole online lifestyle, too, where you set yourself this your own boundaries of like, why would I even try if it's not worth it? Or like, it's just that constant circle of uh, self-pity and yourself, you know, I'm, I'm why try or why do anything if I'm going to be lonely and I'm not going to find a girl. And it's just like a constant, you know, going around in circles where I, I don't know if it, they just seriously just need someone to just be like, all right, fucking come with me and let me, you know, help you with this thing. Like that's the, the one thing that I felt was missing or that I thought was going to happen at some point, but I, I guess it just didn't. Uh, but it, it was frustrating at times because it, it's just like, okay, so you live in the state. Uh, you maybe live in a rural area where you're not going to have the advantages that you have in a big city, but you're still way better than most of the world. Right. So all you have to do is just get on, on, up your ass and do something. Uh, and uh, yeah, no, none of, I mean, I, again, I don't know his name, Jonah Hill did it at the, at the end. And he is the only one that, that feels like a, like a complete human being by the end of it. Mm. Uh, I, guess, I guess that's why I thought he was like the, the most interesting character in the whole thing or the, the one where I would actually be able to have a conversation with and not just tell him to fucking get off his chair and do something. Uh, but yeah, 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 him, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. But, uh, but I feel like, like a lot of their issues, if, if they just got away from their computer that's just continuing this cycle of self-pity they would probably do something of their life. Even if it's just get a whatever job, get a whatever regular, you know, small time job or something, instead of just constantly feeling sorry for yourself or not doing the thing that you're not even willing to try to do. Yeah, no, I agree definitely. And it's like, it was frustrating, you know? I mean, I think I related to it more because I've had so many times in my life where I've just been like, I just want to do nothing. I just want to just yeah. do nothing. I just can't, do, everything's too hard you know, like this shit job, I'm not going, so many jobs I just walked out of because I was like, it's too hard, I can't go back, fuck it, this is bullshit, I'm bored. But there's always been a part where you're like, no, eventually you hit the bottom and you're like, right, I have to fucking pull myself out of this. I have to go, I have to make something of myself. So there's part of me where like, I understood that kind of morose, like they just lost in their own misery. But yeah, as it goes on, it does get a little bit frustrating. It's like, come on, <laughs> fucking do something, you know? <laughs> But, they but that, that's bit, the point know. of the documentary, isn't it? I mean, Hans, you were comparing it to Tiger King before where you're introduced to one interesting character after the next and there's this big narrative yeah. built and you know they have very crazy wild lives. The whole point of this documentary is these are bored young men with nothing to do and that's True. why they act and behave the way that they do. So for one to get out of that by getting a girlfriend or whatever, mm. that I mean, that not that kind of the the idea of the but whole they, documentary they could have really spiced it up and like made it a lot more watchable if they'd have gone like hey this is what some of them do and then it's like mm -hmm. alex manassian fucking driving people over because he thinks women are scum or whatever and then you could be like well here's what fucking elliot roger did like that piece of shit shot up all the place and you know trying to kill women and that like that would be more you could at least be like well hey that's that side of it. This is this other side of it. I don't know. It was very, they really glossed over a lot of that, you know, and they, they completely, it, I get it shit posting edginess. Like, I, I think it's funny a lot of the time. I'm not one of these people who's like, oh, everything edgy is, is real or serious. Like 90% of what them lot say is nonsense. But then like Vidi, I think it is, he says like, sometimes people lose where the irony ends, right? That would have yeah. been the perfect mm -hmm. way for her to be like the, the director. She could have been like, right. Okay, he said that. Now let's show where that happens when people end up becoming fucking Nazis, like internet Nazis, which happens a lot in yeah. these communities. 
or like I said, when Alex, Alec Manassian goes and kills people, but it doesn't. It just like he says it, and that's it. It's out in the air, and it's. I think right. it really lacks like structure, you know. And do you know what I think would have been cool actually? Like maybe if it, it this sounds weird, but maybe if it had even been like fucking hosted, you know, like imagine like Louis Theroux mm. doing that doc. Right. He would have got some fucking great shit out of them, and maybe made them self reflect. Uh, I'm not one of these people who's like no platform. But it, it just kind of gave them a platform to say whatever they want, and that was that, which is fine, you know. But at the same time, what's the point? You have to challenge something somewhere, you know. That's the whole point, right, of a documentary. Like, you can't just. That's, I it. think that's though, a, if if it had taken a nuanced approach, though, then it's very easy to put this documentary into the bin of like, well, don't behave in this way because yeah, this true. is like the far end of that. So, I don't know. I I, I didn't really have as big of a problem with that, considering. You know, uh, there's probably tons of media that that just gives that side or a more slanted sure. perspective of that side. It's like one one drop in the bucket of like in terms of trying to bring a balance. But if we're speaking as like uh, you know responsible filmmakers, documentarians, or whatever, then yeah, it would have it would have done that. But I I don't know if that would have impeded on what it might have been trying to accomplish, if anything, which seems to be a more sympathetic perspective of these guys and like trying to showcase to uh you know the age like neoliberal types that that look at all of this and and don't see any humor in it that it's just like a different or or the majority of it or a portion of it or whatever uh is just a different kind of counterculture with its own uh taboos to break in terms of humor or what have you mm, mm. i tell you actually that's a good point what, what was nice about it was it didn't preach anything I'm so sick of like docs trying to police your thoughts. Now, you should think this. You shouldn't like this bit. You should like that bit. You know, that was good. It wasn't mm. trying to do that. Yeah. I guess uh, my biggest issue is just that, you know, you have the constraints of documentary where, you know, it might not be the most uh, uh, pleasing experience visual, visually unless you're showing something outrageous or you're showing some type of shocking footage that's going to make you actually care about what you're seeing so because all you're seeing is talking heads and you're seeing screens and you're seeing people over the shoulder like it's not the most visually interesting thing but then you have to make people care mm -hmm. otherwise you know we're not going to sit there and just these vignettes of these kids who are not three-dimensional characters they're just people who say mean things online so yeah. for me to to sit there and even like i was telling uh, jake for me to care about a part two you have to show me what they do you have to show me who this person that says these nasty things online, how does he react to the cashier at his coffee place? Or how does how does he deal with his parents or his cousins? Or like, Just show their life so that we can understand where they're coming from other than I'm poor. Because that's all we got. I'm poor, I'm sad, I don't know what to do, and that's it. But they didn't Wait, show Wait, you didn't like the cowboy going to the dance hall with his <laughs> denim <laughs> jeans and his by big himself. hat? Yeah. That could have been such a thing. better would... scene, though. Like, that was yeah. a fucking weird scene. Like, a fucking incel guy who clearly seems to be suicidal. All he does is smoke. He wears a fucking Stetson hat, dresses as a cowboy, and he goes to, like, he has one random dance with someone he barely knows. Like, that could have been such a better scene. Instead, like, they kind of open up on it, on him dancing, yeah. and then it gets worse. Like, then he ends up doing nothing yeah. else. Like, it was very strange, the structure. The whole look of that felt like an old episode of Twin Peaks or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. Him definitely. going to that bar. I like that guy. I hope he's okay now. The other guy's yeah, like, hey, there's, there's, I like him, like, in the sense of, you know, the bit where he kind of puts his head in his hands, and I think he's, like, crying. You don't really see him crying, but, you know... Uh, that you know when you just I was about to say that feel <laughs> like when yeah. like, you know when you see that you know I know exactly how he felt you know what I mean you know when you're just like oh my god you just everything is just you're in the pit you just put your head in your hands and you're just like you're finished but then they go and see him again and he's like I'm alright now <laughs> he's not doing yeah. anything else <laughs> he's still doing the same shit he's just smoking cigarettes or mm. maybe he is doing something else but they don't fucking tell you they just let him say it you know what I mean I, I, I start to wonder, maybe the filmmaker was not great at asking questions, perhaps. I don't know. That That's the thing. It. Could be that. That's it makes me wonder because... what, the, what the... I mean, was the idea of this to go in glorifying these types of guys? Uh, does this, this filmmaker have an interest in like making movies at all? Or is this like, strictly well, what it is supposed to be? Apparently she's an incel. Apparently she was like an incel herself, allegedly. I spoke to Campbell, like, I think he... I think, no, I don't know. Someone mentioned it anyway. And I think she was like... 
or at least not an intel, but was like involved in that community, like genuinely rather than trying to seek it out. Yeah, I just felt it was very shallow. I just, I didn't care by the end of it. I, my attention wasn't, I guess because I don't think those comments are edgy. I feel like maybe if you're someone that's not used to seeing content when people are being mean online, you'd be, oh my God, I can't believe you said that. Oh my God, I can't believe but you that's said the, this other that's thing. the case. But, I mean, that that's what we're talking about, though. We're talking about a movie designed for that audience. It's South by Southwest. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I well... Let's see. Um, when you told me about the other, what's the other one called? Shy, shy, shy boys IRL. Sad? Yeah. Now that one, how you said it was forty minutes, right? Yeah, about. I, I made it to ten, and I couldn't. I was just, I, I was done. Like I felt like the biggest difference between the two is that, in the uh, that feeling, whatever that was called. Um, it's a, it's a sadness that they have. So they're reaching out because they're sad and they don't know what to do. And the other one, the Chai Boys or whatever, they're very confident on their autism. So that's very upsetting because it's just like, you're just being shitty and you're just saying, well, I'm being shitty because I have this thing. So it's okay because I'm a shithead now, but it's fine because I mean, you're not going to understand because I'm being a shithead, but it's okay because I'm being a shithead and I'm telling you I'm being a shithead. And every single one of them, it's like that. So after 10 minutes, I was like, I can't. I can't. Like, I'd rather have them say mean things online than have them fucking listen to this autistic people just being mean. Oh, I think they're great. They're wonderful characters. You got that guy yeah. who looks like Dracula, but he's got juicy lips. <laughs> that juicy <laughs> lips. <laughs> you just want to kiss him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The thing is, though, like, just, he's immediately like, I fucking hate him. Like, the first thing he says is oh. like, Oh, I just want a fat, ugly girlfriend. Like I said, I just feel like you're a fucking cunt straight what away. What did he say? He wanted like, to look like a like a proper Korean man or something at some point. <laughs> and he did like a fucking Photoshop of what he wished he looked like, and it looks fucking insane. It looks like an e-fit from a crime scene. It's so funny. Well, that's the thing. It's because everyone's met one of those, right? Everyone's mm. met someone that's like, well, you're not smart enough to understand what I'm about to say, but I'm gonna tell you for five minutes straight without yeah. breathing anyway. That's you like know? traditional like, that's... nerd, like old school nerd, right? Yeah. Mm. Like I can't, I can't, I don't, I can't think of anybody I know now. But back in high school, you would run yeah. into those guys all the time. Yeah, they yeah, were yeah. very easy to find. Yeah, we get them in our school where they might be like, "Huh, you're just a fucking chav," and it's like, "Yeah, but like you will get your head kicked in." Like, fuck off. And then they get <laughs> older and they get empowered and they just become like, like that guy, just nasty to everybody. You know, I didn't like him. I didn't find. That one you're on about, the Juicy Lips guy, like, I didn't find any redeeming qualities about him, man. I just was like, he's a genuine misogynist. Like, he thinks he's way, like, he thinks he's a better person than he is. And all of his problems, he is just like, women are horrible. And it's like, you're a fucking piece of shit. And, like, your your mother should have raised you differently. But then the shy one with the glasses, I really, I wanted to just give him a hug, man. Like, he seemed like a guy who was, <laughs> he liked women, but he was just shy and he was struggling. And then the guy who's training to be a pickup artist. Oh, he's he's so good. <laughs> he's so good. He's like, oh, well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna be in so much longer because I started lifting weights and now I've got muscles. And he's skinny as shit, and he looks exactly yeah. the same. Like, oh, he was so funny, man. And then you see a really shy side of him, actually, don't you? Like, he's like, yeah, no, I'm a virgin. Yeah, and you like, you see him like being more human, I guess, yeah. as opposed to like wearing sunglasses and having uh, <laughs> acne on his face with a yeah, peanut shit like, head. Hair and shit. Yeah. Uh, how does that one end? How does that one end? Uh, yeah. They all stay the so, same. So and uh, the one with glasses, I think his name is uh, David. Yeah. He winds up meeting with his ex-girlfriend and she doesn't want to get back with him. That's how that ends. No, no, they get together. They hang out. They don't. Yeah, they, she's well, got a no. boyfriend or something. <laughs> no, 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 no. What happens is they no, they get together. They become like girlfriend and that. Um... But then the filmmaker ruins it for him. So they're like, they go to an aquarium. I watched it last week. They go to an aquarium and he's like, yeah, like we're, we're seeing each other now sort of thing. And then the filmmaker's like, well, how do you feel about the fact that David runs like this website, Love Shy, that's for like angry <laughs> incels? All right. And then, and, then, and then she's like, you run that website? And he's like, no, nah, no, nah, nah, not really. And, and, then, and then the film was like, yeah, you do. It's your website. <laughs> he just she completely puts him in it so then he's mm -hmm. fucked basically yeah he was lying to her so i guess tough luck but uh, yeah he seems embarrassed about it 
but uh, I think I um I think what I was confusing was I listened to uh that the the director of that movie went on the podcast last podcast on the left to talk about like incels or whatever. This was like during uh some mass shooting or whatever. They brought her on, and she had revealed that things didn't work out between the two of them. It was probably because of her. (laughs) Yeah. She was good, though. Um, I liked it. Every so often, you see them interacting with the woman that made the film, and it's quite cool, you know, and she's, you know, she's a, she's an attractive woman. She's not, like, an incel or whatever, and they have, like, weird conversations with her. Like, they're, like, what do you, one of them, the guy that was the pickup artist, he says, like, uh, what do you think of dicks? What do you think of dicks look like? <laughs> and, but she's really good at handling it. Instead of being weirded out, she goes, yeah, they're fine. Like, it's fine. And she's, I don't know, I feel like randomly they're comfortable around her. You know what I mean? And there's that funny bit where they keep going on about how good looking the sound guy is. And he looks like a fucking Linkin oh, yeah. Park reader. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. It's so funny. Like, I don't know. Yeah, there's something very endearing about Shybo's IRL. That, like you say, like Hans, like with... Um, with uh, that lips. that feel when <laughs> that feel when no girlfriend, yeah, it's just hopelessness, and you just feel like fuck. But then maybe that's the point of the film: is it to show, like, if there's one thing it really gets across is how sad and hopeless the lives are. You know what I mean of those kind of people. Now, what kind of reaction have you been seeing to that movie? You noted that it seemed particularly negative with the like film Twitter crowd. Yeah, but. I mean, you have a pretty eclectic circle in terms Mm. of people who are interested in Popular Front and associate with you. Like, what has been the general response to that? It's been mixed, man. Like, so I put it in the Discord after you sent me the link, by the way. Um, And some people were like, oh, I really liked it. There was one guy that was like, oh, I turned it off because I didn't like what, you know, I didn't like how they they kind of brushed over Elliot Rogers and the bad shit he did, which, you know, it's fair enough. Like, I, I personally, I was like, come on, like, just watch it the end you might as well but you know I, I get that there's some people more sensitive to it but then i saw like you know i saw people online that like you know kind of fake kind of fake left you know i'm still with her hillary clinton liberal types that were saying it's completely irresponsible to make this film which really pissed me off because it's like who that like stop policing what people can and can't make like in fucking art or whatever like that pisses me off so in that sense i was like that's good that it's pissed those people off you know i think then people should perpetually be pissed off, you know, like the Marvel fandom types, the guy that gives fucking, you know, that takes the uh, the the Rotten Tomatoes um, their own review seriously, you know, the guy that is like saying that fucking Amy Schumer is a great hit. So those people need to be like upset, which is good. But then I spoke to like Campbell about it. Who, you know, Campbell's fine. Like he's a, he's a fucking troll. He's a strange guy, but he's not like a fucking Nazi or anything like that, you know. In fact, I think he's like kind of a, I think he's like a communist, maybe like left wingish. I don't know. Who knows? She's probably lying about everything. But like I spoke to him about it, and he, he was like, I don't know, it's fine. you know. But he kind of had the same reservations as maybe some of us had, which was like, it wasn't really finished. you know. And I agree. It was like a lot of people are like, yeah, it's not really done. But, yeah, um, based on his, his Twitter response, he seemed uh, not so hot on the documentary. Mm, apparently, he's writing a review about it and stuff. Like, I don't know. It just, it is what it is, man. I mean, he doesn't come across bad in it, but which is funny at the end when they like, haven't seen him for a while and he's just got like fatter and his beard is bigger. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but he, he seems very, he's good at talking. He seems very confident in himself. He's very contained, even though he's kind of nuts. Whereas the others are more like naive. So I think like Hans said, he didn't, I don't know if he even belonged in that doc, to be honest. Yeah. He seems like to be the the only one that has a little bit of life experience that's able to yeah. have like a, a different perspective than just I'm sad and my life sucks. Definitely. Uh, yeah. And was uh, he the only I one living he... in a major city? By the way, I we know that so. the cowboys out in the middle of Texas. I, I don't remember the first two guys, the ones who were shooting guns or what. I, that makes me think they're probably in the Midwest. Yeah. Or yeah. Uh, the South, but yeah. who, I mean, who, who knows. But then, like, I think, because I knew some of these people from online anyway, like, I didn't know them personally, but like, I followed a few of them because they post dumb shit that is just, like, interesting to my research, to be honest, you know, like, looking into weird internet stuff. And, like, some of them, like, that Viddy guy, like, he's he doesn't, pati- I mean, I could be very wrong here, but, like, for, as far as I'm aware, he doesn't particularly come across as, like, particularly angry or, you know, nasty. It's it's the real nastiness is uh, is people that just weren't really in the dock. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of 
that incel community has some really fucking nasty shit. You know what I mean? And people say, oh, it's just jokes. And some of it is like, nah, nah, nah. You're doing this all day, every day, saying about killing women. And it, okay, it might be a joke and it might be a way to release. But you're doing it out in public online. You know, you are online. Like, and in fact, I spoke to Campbell, like I went on his podcast and he was saying, oh, well, it's a bit annoying that like these reporters are so interested in what we're doing and why do they always rake over our stuff. I said, look, you're doing it out in the open. Tough shit. You know, I, I kind of compared it to um, when, uh, you know, I was filming before and some like uh, anarchists were smashing up the place in Germany one time a few years ago and they like wanted to beat us up and they wanted to take the camera. And I kind of said, like, look, no, you do this out in the open. Are you going to get filmed? Sorry. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can't just you can't run out in the street and start smashing a police car and then be like, how dare you film this? Same way yeah. they can't expect that no one is going to go over their shit when they're saying like, yeah, man. Let's drive a car into a sorority house. Like, it's like, nah, like, it doesn't work. Like that. And to be fair to him, he was like, yeah, that's a good point, blah, blah. But I definitely but think even, it's been mischaracterized. So. Even showing something like that would have made this more interesting. Because yeah. that's the thing. We don't really get into the real nasty. Yes, and uh, and then, so so then it's not impactful enough for you to, to think or uh, either go for or against them. So if you had shown, you know, the people that are really horrible online, at least you'll have someone to root against. Mm. And then, you know, they're miserable by the end of the year. Like, good, this person fucking miserable. Something. Make you feel something. The fact that they didn't go deep into any of them is just like, okay, it's cool. So there's another guy on the internet. And that's it. So even if you had shown the real nasty shit they say or the real nasty shit they do online, I don't know what they do. Again, I'm talking like a fucking 60-year-old about this because I'm so outside of, of this world. But... If you had shown the uglier side, maybe I would have cared a little bit more, but it felt very lukewarm. It didn't get enough into their life for you to care about, you know, why they react this way. And they also didn't show enough of, you know, the nasty thing they do or the nasty things they say. That that sounds dirtier than <laughs> that I was int <laughs> intended. But, you know, like for you to give a shit. I, that's, the, that's the issue that I have with it. I didn't care. I couldn't care about any of them. I couldn't care about what they were saying or what they did online just because it wasn't enough to either side for me to say, okay, it just felt like, you know, someone being uh, whatever. Online. I'm getting the vibe you really didn't like this doc at all, Hobbs. <laughs> I didn't really, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't think you said a single good thing about it. <laughs> um, yeah, it was... Fine. I don't know. It was fine. It, like two two it was fine. You just it. ranted about how they're all <laughs> shitheads and the documentary sucks. But it was I fun. saw it two. I saw it two weeks ago when you told me, and it left no lasting impression on me at all. Like yeah, I'm trying same. to remember by, what you guys are saying. Where it's like, okay, so I'm trying to think of something good that I could say about this. But it's not that it was horrible. It's not that it was badly shot. It's not that it was anything other than there. Yeah. You know, you know I, was, I I've been indoors. I mean, we've all been indoors, but I've been watching so many movies lately, and this came right at the tail end of me. What I've been doing is I've been hopping in and out of like filmmakers, filmographies, and uh, one that I had done was Errol Morris, mm. the famous documentarian, and all of his documentaries are so cinematic and well pieced together, and I watched about four of those, and then I watched this, and it, it literally just felt like a YouTube documentary had gotten into South by Southwest. Like, I, I, I can't agree more with what you guys have been saying in terms of just, like, uh, the creative piecing of that. Um, I, like, I, mean, I, though, I like the lo-fi kind of YouTube documentary feel of things. Like, mm -hmm. for me, that wasn't the problem. In fact, I don't even like cinematic documentaries. I, like, I don't even like when documentaries are shot too well, actually. I'm quite a fan of like Nick Broomfield's style. Actually, no, his all of his docs are shot fucking terribly. That's too far. But like, they're so bad. But like, that's too far. But still, like, I quite like that messy style of with documentaries. For me, it wasn't the, that it was structure. Like, you know what I mean? The fact that so much went nowhere, it just didn't flow. But there's a part of me that's like the over romantic part of me is like, was this like a really good film in terms of? making you feel how pathetic and sad their lives are because that is the only thing you get it's like yeah it's i think it was sad. yeah maybe it was right like was like it, it, I, I mean we're, we're harping on the negatives but i i i think it would be foolish to say that whatever that the, the documentary didn't accomplish anything I, I think it definitely accomplished something because mm. i'm hearing again I'm, I'm listening to these podcasts where they're talking about this and these are like staunch very dismissive people of that corner of the internet. And um, this 
changed some people's minds, I think, or at least made them more open to the idea that like, oh, maybe we should treat these kinds of people as people, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. rather than being like, oh, incel terrorists strike again. Right. <laughs> oh, it's so dumb. They're also, that but lad, Sean, think... like, I really, that lad, Sean, like, I just felt like the one that was started doing powerlifting, there was part of him that I just wanted to, like, put an arm around him. Be like, come on, bro, like, you're going to make it. You're going to make it. You're going to be fine, you know? So maybe that is a part of it as well. Maybe that is, like you say, maybe that's some kind of impression. Go ahead, Hans. What were you going to say? Uh, no, no. Go ahead. What are you feeling, shy now? Are you feeling Sorry, nervous? Is the you pressure know. on? Anyway. No, again, I'm just, I'm trying to remember of something that I liked about it, but I, I yeah, I just. Uh, That's not your forte, saying good things about uh, uh, <laughs> media or people or products. I guess. This was shit. No one watch it. I hope everyone that's in it dies. <laughs> no. You should be. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, I'm, I'm not old enough. They'll, they'll do one about me when I'm lonely in 10 years and I have no hair. I just have a horseshoe, but I grew it because I stopped old caring. So. <laughs> yeah. The way that there's something that I know, I was quite surprised. Like some of them went in it. I felt like the ones that featured in it have more balls than a lot of the ones in that community. Because that community is like a big community of nastiness and ha ha ha, look at everybody else, like we're fucking hilarious. I mean, even yeah. though they are aware of how like pathetic they are, they're still like put themselves up here a little bit, like ha ha, we're better than normies at least. Um, so I was kind of surprised that they, some of them did go in it. Like fair play, they actually were like willing to go like, yeah, this is me. Because some of them are just so like, you know, they act tough, but actually their lives are just fucking terrible. So Maybe, like, maybe there's part of me that's like, yeah, maybe they did. The fact that they were even in the dock, maybe that was them trying to do something. You know what I mean? Like, trying to pull something out for themselves. I don't know. I wonder if any of them got paid for this. Paid? I mean, it, oh. it, it's extremely lo-fi. I, I doubt it. But people get paid to be in documentaries in America? Yeah. yeah. I, well, really? hey, uh, did you that know that one of the people that financed that. this project, one of the producers of this movie... Is a former guest of yours on Popular Front. Oh, Cody. Yeah. yeah I didn't know sense. he produced the documentary I didn't, I until didn't recently. I didn't know that. But I know I heard his name mentioned. I, I heard that they tried to get Mike Cernovich on it, that fucking shithead. And apparently, <laughs> I, I won't say who, but one of them was like, absolutely not. Like, if he gets on this, like, I'm not involved. Which, fair play if that's true, but you never know. Them lot lie a lot. But I don't know, man. Cody, really? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> it makes what sense, is he up to is he out of prison prison now or I don't he must be know, right man like that for me like you know i had him on the podcast and i thought what he was doing was interesting at least but that from like paying for sex to me is a very is just no 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 i think that's terrible I, I really think that's not good i think that like any society where you have to pay your it's okay to pay to have sex with someone is just sick mm. i don't like that <laughs> for me that's like i don't like it <laughs> So I just kind of assume, also like that guy's too hot to touch now. <laughs> Fuck, <laughs> you know, like there's only yeah. so many things you can avoid. Hey, have you guys seen Mike Cernovich's skin lately? No, what's he no. done? Ah, uh, it's really uh, his his skin is disgusting. It's always <laughs> flaking. It's always pink. It looks like he's sunburnt all the time. It's awful. I think I think he does steroids, right? That's probably why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that I th that must have triggered something because now he's just constantly. I watched uh, the the documentary he did, hoaxed couple of years like, back so shit, man. Uh, which was pretty well done it's uh, well made yeah but it's shit <laughs> and in the scenes where he's being interviewed if you just stare at him long enough without blink like sometimes you can get away with looking at somebody and you don't notice like a sunburn up here or something if you look at him long enough and you just see how like it looks like he went out into uh uh, uh what is that really salty sea <laughs> like the Black Sea or something. The Black Sea. It looks like he stepped out into the Black <laughs> Sea in the hot, yeah. boiling sun just, for a day. But he's just dry. He's just flaky. he's dry and pink, and he's got little. Ugh, it's it's really disgusting. This man is a horror show. He um he tried to like <laughs> I called him a cunt once on Twitter because he is. He's just like such a cunt. Like he's such an embarrassing guy. And the irony is he thinks he's like macho and he's just a fucking cunt. Um. And I think I was calling him that because he basically tried to take credit for lifting the lid on Epstein, which is bullshit. Like, there's this woman um, in Miami working for the Miami Herald who just her whole career has been 
hammering this Epstein shit even before it got exposed. She's great. It's her who mm. fucking broke the story, not him, little shithead. And so I called him a cunt, and then he like retweeted it and was like, "This guy is sexist." He said the word "cunt," and it's like, bro, like I'm not in that world. I don't care. Like in England, also that word is used by women as well. Like trust me, like no one cares. You know what I mean? He was like, "Ha, got ya." That's <laughs> like, oh, fuck <laughs> up, man. Like, he's such a gorilla mindset and all. That. Oh man, that shit is horrible, man. That that stuff it's is such th- a funny industry. That's the guy that was making like music videos a couple of years ago right no Sir, uh, no who who, who, who are am i thinking, thinking about i i don't know isn't cernovich remember when we had that politics podcast he was one of the characters right that no. we talk about is that is that not you're thinking of somebody sorry, else no 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 the cernovich glasses, aviator glasses no no, 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 no. aviator no, glasses no, i don't no, even no, know who you're talking about it. now i don't know he's tom like cruise a high voice um, but then he's like, and he because his wife is like, I don't know, Latino or something. He just thinks that he's like the king of race, <laughs> you know. What I mean? like he's, <laughs> he's always he's always been like, yeah, that's not racist. Like my wife's Latino, you know. Like you'll notice whenever he's under attack for something race related, he'll make his icon on Twitter him and his wife, <laughs> or his fa- yeah. his family, <laughs> his little like, brown look, babies. Look, look, I got it. My wife isn't white. It's okay. I can be racist. Yeah, he's a fucking lunatic, man. He's so funny. He's he's one of the few people that have like he's survived long past his like shelf life. Yeah, shelf life. I, I know. Like, why is he still here? Like, what is it? What even is he? He's a professional man. He wears a suit. <laughs> he lifts weights. He, I mean, he was on 2020, you know? Uh, but, I mean, out of all, like, the 2016 characters, Milo and Gavin, and, oh, like, they God. all died out except Cernovich, really. Cernovich is, like, the last real bastion of any kind of, like, right-wing personality from that time. There's an interesting what happened to the guy? Sorry, sorry. They got, like, a punch. They got, like, a punch. What was his name? The guy that got the punched? The viral... Richard Spencer. Video of uh, Richard Spencer. Hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever happened to him? He got he, fat. He, yeah, he's got like he's trying to do like uh, what's like third called third positionism, where it's basically like far right white supremacists team up with like Muslim extremists, basically. Like that's basically the ideology. It's very fucking strange. So he's Damn. trying to he's trying to do that shit. I think. Um, but a lot of those people from that like right wing populist period, there's a lot of them that have just fucked off, uh, and have either just like been on become full racist, or there's ones now that are like trying to rehabilitate themselves, you know, um, which is a bit weird. <laughs> so they're like, oh no, I'm not like. In fact, one of them, the only one that seems sincere to me is the guy from that. Um, you know, he's you know him fucking seventeen. Was it seventeen ninety one L or whatever? Oh yeah, Lex. those guys. Yeah, yeah. And well, but they were—they weren't but... really like far, far. No, no, no. They, 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 they weren't ever they far were, right, but they were yeah, they definitely far right, right wing. No. Definitely, yeah, they weren't far right. No, but they—I see that Lex guy, like, and he's actually a smart geezer, like, and he was saying some things on Twitter, just being like, like that was such a waste of time, you know, like that whole period I, for him as well. Like he was saying that, like, that was such a pointless thing. Um, you know, I think he kind of closed it all down now. Um, and then the other guy, O'Brien, like. Fuck knows what he's up to. He says some. Who, things whoever does the graphics between the two of Lex, them. Lex, um, yeah. He's sick at graphics. Yeah, I mean, seventeen ninety one L is was anyway one of the best YouTube channels as far as like visuals go. Um, I think it was him, uh, but one of them did the visuals for that Lauren Southern documentary on um, uh, where was it? Borderless. Oh, like white farmers in South Africa. That, yeah, I don't that know. Whole story is. Um, like, the problem with that is it is a very real problem. Like, I did a, a podcast uh, episode on it, and it's, like, a serious issue. But then the only people that seem to be taking a really close, close look at it is, like, white supremacists. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you get a very warped vision. Or you get, like, liberals who just, like, don't want to touch it. It's too hot to touch. Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a fucked up story, man. But, yeah, Lex, he does some good shit, man. But, uh, I think, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I'm not saying he's, like, a lefty or anything now, but certainly I've noticed a few of them of kind of i think they're realizing that like that was just such a fucking stupid waste of time you know what i mean so pointless
unfortunately, I'm not seeing a lot of the cancel culture kids realise that, you know, from the other side. They seem to just, they've had a little reawakening now that people are in lockdown. I know it's uh, like being more boring than usual. Yeah, it seems being, like, 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 like it died out at first, anyway. Yeah, I mean, it seemed like up until recently it was dead. Yeah, yeah like it, once once the quarantine happened, it, it seemed like, okay, nobody really gives a, a shit about any of this anymore. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we get comfortable being indoors for just long enough. And it seems like that started to reignite, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. These people are very angry inside. They're like those kind of cancel culture people. I think they're as angry inside as like these incel type people, just from a different perspective, or at least they ended up on a different side. But it's just angriness and like, I think self-loathing, self-pity, whatever you want to fucking call it. I'd say one good thing about this doc is that um, it was quite honest in terms of. The people in it were honest about themselves which is refreshing to see actually like to see you know especially when all media now like i've noticed that a lot of recent documentaries instead of going let's shine a light on this they seem to be about bigging people up like making characters like like you said hands about fucking tiger king this is a guy that is abusing animals and now like every two minutes you get instagram adverts where it's like hey do you want to get a, a, a birthday card with joe exotic on it well, no, yeah. he murdered some fucking tigers because he bought too many, you know, like, and like I said, the guys are fucking racist, which they left out. Yeah. So, no, I don't, I don't want to, like, I don't want my docs to, like, make heroes, actually, out of everything. So, in that respect, it was quite nice to just see, like, whoa, these are fucking weirdos, and, like, and that's it. There's no, like, almost, I'm kind of being, here, like, going back on what I said now, but sometimes it's quite nice almost when there isn't a redeeming quality there is no like triumph it's just like oh fuck <laughs> you know and that's it so but yeah like i said my main problem was just the structure was just like yeah just dead out you know a good movie that i watched recently kind of not really on the subject of uh this documentary was uh this is england i rewatched that for the first oh, time in years for the first time no uh for the first time in about like five ten years or so uh -huh, uh -huh. and i was like i revisited it and I was like, oh, geez, is this going to be like corny now with like no. the messaging? Good but right. no, it, it holds up so well. And it's so uh, it's so perfect. So great. That, that film, when I watched it as a young, like I was probably like fucking 13 or 14 when I first saw that film. And like, I was like, all right, this is a film about racism. Like, this is fucking disgusting. Like, I liked it, but I was like this, you know, fuck combo, like racist as fuck and Nazi, blah, blah. And then when I watched it when I was older, I was like, this is a film about a lot more than that you know what i mean yeah. there's, a, there's a lot more to it than that it's like very insecure man and blah blah have you seen the series you know there's a yeah series, right i've i've watched it all i'm a big fan of shane it's Meadows. really good um, right it's fucking really good when i i basically had the same reaction as you when i watched it back when it came out in like 2006 mm. or so i was like oh yeah the, the this is about how nazis are bad obviously and <laughs> yeah. i watched it again uh just a couple of days ago, I was like, well, the the whole like political and race angle is kind of irrelevant to what's actually happening, which is like this guy comes out of prison. He feels like he's got something to prove and he completely destroys his friend group by making the initiative of it uh, related to something that he's convinced himself of or, or, mm. or suddenly believes in. It's all very surface level and artificial. Um, and I, like you were saying, the insecurity of this guy and how it crumbles everything around him. And until he erupts at the end. Yeah, and that becomes even more true when you see in the series what actually happens to Combo. You know, like he gets... He gets he fucking gets killed. He gets killed. put in a barrel. Yeah. That's what happens. Yeah, he gets killed by the... Uh, by Milky's brothers and his cousins and that because, you know, tough shit, you know. <laughs> but um, yeah. it's good the way he does it. He just accepts it. He's like, yep. But he saves Lol, right? Like, he saves Lol. Like yeah, I mean, he, he has a full-on redemption arc throughout, like, the series. With the, the second installment, he kills her stepdad, who's, yeah. uh, like, a molester and a creep. And then I think he's excluded <clears throat> in, the, in the third one, the Christmas special. This is England 88. That's more about, like, Woody dealing with the fact that... Uh, I love you Will all. Kid. <laughs> yeah. Every minute. I bloody love and you then, all. <laughs> and then uh the last one this is england 90 is all about like combo's demise and how milky winds up being corrupted by giving giving way to revenge and mm. also just like the transition away from like the original skinhead scene yes, into like yeah. the rave scene of the 90s mm. which is just that's so, great yeah so, yeah 
Like taking um, pills and shit. Like what made me think of that though is you talking about like how some people have tried to be on like uh or or come out of like the whole ultra right wing vibes that 2016, 2017 had. And Shane Meadows was one of these guys where he got consumed by skinhead culture and then he fell into that like racist culture really? uh, that it evolved into and then he pulled himself out of it and that's what spawned this movie wow i didn't know that i was completely unaware about that wow fuck wow that's that's interesting because like he's from the same place as me i think i mentioned yeah. that anytime anyone mentions him i'm like man it was the only good thing we got going but um <laughs> <laughs> but he you know yeah like skinheads was you know in the uk especially skinhead was was anti-racist like it wasn't just like a thing that wasn't racist they were explicitly an anti-racist group you know what i mean it was uh you know even militantly so sometimes and then when the became a racist thing it was all fucking weird you know there's there's stories of like skin like nazi skinheads bumping into like anti-fascist ones and being like hey boys you know like saying something racist and then the racist the anti-fascist one just beating the shit out of them because they mis misunderstood. They're like, oh, we thought you were racist like us, you know? So it's this weird <laughs> thing where they had the exact same fucking uniform. And they one means, one is completely a Nazi and one is completely against it. It's such a weird thing to happen, you know? Very odd. Yeah. It, it, it's very interesting that that got co-opted entirely and so uh, essentially inversed. I tell you what about This Is England, though. I think I've said this before maybe to you guys, but... um. It has the the most visceral, upsetting rape scene I've ever seen in any film ever. Um, I think it's the dad is like I think he rapes his. Oh, eighty six. Yeah, and yeah. I, I, you know, you know me, like I fucking, you know, for my job, I watching ISIS videos, and I've seen, you know, people real life body dead bodies in front of me and shit in the war zone, and so very little like really shakes me. And I remember seeing that I couldn't fucking sleep, mate. That I can't remember any time since that has happened since. Like, I remember, just, you know, from watching a film, I saw that scene, and I don't think, I think I had to turn it off. I was like, that is just, the way they do it, it's, it's just so deeply upsetting. Do you know what I mean? Just, just, I just couldn't handle it, man. It was so fucked up. I don't know what it was that was fucked up about it. I really don't, but just, oh, my God. Great acting. What do you What do you mean you don't know? It's a dad raping its star. Its star. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know. What's so don't weird know about what it. I don't know why I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> no, what I mean is like <laughs> I don't know which part of that horrible thing hit me so hard. You know, like I've seen other films where the woman gets raped and you're kind of like, oh man, fuck, this is horrible. Yeah. Have you ever you seen the strange it? thing about the Johnsons? Nah, nah. nah. Oh. Is that really nasty? You want to tell? That's, tell uh, that's yeah. Go ahead, Hans. You you've been quiet. Why don't you? I think you're good at summaries. You summarized the right. documentary well. Okay, so the strange things about, things about the Johnsons. It's a uh, the first, I guess, known uh, short film <laughs> that the the uh, filmmaker that did Hereditary and Midsummer did, and it's this story about a son that is in love with his dad. Um, and rapes him constantly. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. So it starts. So the first, the initial scene, it's a very what? nice, you know, it's a, yeah, it's the bedroom, the kid's like, bedroom, son, right? Son, so are you jerking off? Yeah, Jeez, he's son, laying look, in bed. It's normal. Right? It's okay. Holding a, <laughs> he's laying in bed holding a photo, right? And his dad comes in and he's like, oh, I just caught my son jerking off. So I'm going to go talk to my son about it, whatever. Yeah. And he's like, it's normal, it's fine, don't be embarrassed, whatever, it's fine, just finish up. And then he that le he's that leaves, and when he leaves, we see that the photo that he's jerking off. He's holding, like, that's... the family photo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's shirtless, yeah. <laughs> it's that is shirtless. So that's that's the it's initial his dad scene. At the beach. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's It looks like the, oh, I don't know if you're familiar with Seinfeld, but you know that yeah, yeah. Seinfeld, Seinfeld episode where George is at, like, the back... Uh, on the beach and it's a family photo he's just there shirtless <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what it looks like yeah uh, and then throughout the next 20 minutes it's just this kid brutally raping his dad in, but, like, but hold on you have to state that it like it takes place over the course of like a good 20 years like the son's about yeah. to get married uh to the love of his life but then you know his dad is in the bathtub like a traumatized woman just like staring off into space and then he's knocking at the door. He he needs to get his fix, you know. And then he just tears the door down to rape his father. He breaks it in, like The Shining. How much do they yeah. show? Uh, not much. Not not, not, not nothing. Much, I think. But yeah, not no, much. But you don't need to. 
you don't need to because you hear the grunts and you hear oh. the dad. Just like, yeah. Oh. And then and then yeah. it cuts it cuts to the bedroom and you see the mom and she just like turns the volume up of the TV. Well, she knows yeah, it's yeah, happening. She ignores it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What, what, wait, why did wait, why wait, his dad is a complete pussy or something? Like, why did he let that happen? He doesn't want to let his son down, you know. <laughs> it was written, and then the and the thing is, <laughs> to be a the, good thi- father. <laughs> the thing oh, is man. that I remember when this thing came out. I, it was like what 2016, I think, or something like that. No, 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 no. It, he did. He did it? Hereditary 2016, 2017. This, this okay, is the so director was- of Hereditary in Midsummer. Did this movie. So what I guess is, it's 2012, maybe. What is the point of the film? The, uh, to make Hans and I laugh repeatedly. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah. It's such a... And the thing is, like, it's very off-putting, but the whole time you're sitting there, it's just like, okay, there's no... Oh, shit. Like, it just keeps going and on and on and on until it just ends horribly. Uh, and then it just ends, and I, you do some Googling, and you search for the director, and it's like this little tiny redhead jewish man that just wrote a short film about you know a black son raping his black dad over and over again for 20 years yeah that's uh, really fucking strange yeah and yeah, the, the thing strange is thing that, about the johnsons that's the whole point that's that's what it's called and and you don't know how to take it too because the tone of it it's kind of jokey at the beginning it's kind of like it's kind <laughs> oh of like this happened haha punchline and then boom it's almost sitcom at first it's like a whimsical like abc drama show like blackish oh, or something and then oh, we get the into colors that. are very very saturated you know everything's yeah, yeah. very bright and very colorful yeah oh. it's, yeah see films like that like rosemary's baby as well like for me people are like oh it's ah, uh, it's uh i'm like no this is just horrible it's not for me <laughs> this is just gross and i'll take something being fucked up if there's a good story like you know but you know this is england the series the whole that whole story arc with the abusive father it's fucking horrible, but it's very good. And I tell you what, not good that it happened, obviously, but it's very good the way they've made it. And it's very real in terms of kind of council, council estate culture has a lot of um, very fucked up sexual deviancy and sexual abuse happening. Like, I don't know why, but it's something specific to these kind of conditions a lot of the time. Certainly growing up, I remember being like, you know, your dad, I don't know, it's very weird the way your dad be like, you don't go around to that household. You just don't. Don't talk to that guy. You know what I mean? You just know that's the yeah. nonce. That's the pedo on the block. It's fucked up. It's so weird, actually. But um, so that, it was like, there's a really good reason for that. But then when I'm watching a film and it's like, yeah, this is t- 20 minutes of uh, this guy's raping his dad <laughs> and then it ends. <laughs> I'm just like, why? <laughs> What's the point? <laughs> I just don't see the point, you know. I don't want to feel that uncomfortable for no payoff. It's a, it's a it's a love story. It's just uh... <laughs> oh man, um, fucking hell. It's and and you know what? I think it's really funny that because now he's become this horror icon, right? This director that does this artistic horror movies and whatever. I don't think I, I haven't seen anyone bringing that up in one of their interviews. Just like <laughs> can can we can we take a couple of minutes and just talk about this? <laughs> This thing that I discovered in an IMDb page when I was doing some research. Like, has yeah. anyone ever asked him as to what the, what the fuck? I that guess that's the only so answer funny. you can ask. Just like, what the fuck was that? A, a junket. And they'd just be like, hey, uh, yeah. why did you make a film about a kid raping his own dad for 20 years? What would he what's say? It, what's oh. interesting is, you know, he was talking about Midsummer. He was talking about Hereditary and how they're like partially autobiographical. Like things in his real life inspired oh. the right oh. Midsummer. It's like, oh, I was going through a bad breakup during this time. That's why I wrote this movie. Oh, uh, uh, you, know, you know, mental illness or something. Uh, that's why I wrote Hereditary. Oh, what's yeah, going on what with that one? The other one, he's like, oh, yes. I was raping my dad for 20 years. That's why I wrote this <laughs> movie. <laughs> Fucking hell, man. Yeah, I'm not going to oh, check that one out. Is Midsummer good, though? Like, I've heard that's good. Uh, I mean, I, I really enjoyed it uh, when I went to go see it in the theater. And then on repeat viewings, I was like, yeah, this is, I'm over this. I, I yeah. like not interested in horror films. Like, they've never scared me. They've never entertained me particularly. So I don't know. Honestly, does it, it only feels like a horror film if you were in the girl's shoes, I guess. Okay. Like, it doesn't, it, it doesn't have, like... Not an obvious horror. And, and it, yeah, it, it's it, not really. It, it, I mean, Midsummer is not really a horror film. Hereditary is definitely a horror film. Midsummer is yeah. just more like a thriller kind of. Okay, like that yeah, feels yeah, like it's is. an action cop film, if I call it a thriller. But it, huh. it, yeah, it's got no shocking moments. Or 
It's about yeah. the occult, kind of, right? Uh, no, not, I mean, not really. It's kind of like, have you ever seen The Wicker Man? Yeah, yeah. I watched that, like, a month ago for the first time. It's more like uh, people who are pagan extremists. Right, right, right. I yeah, thought The Wicker so... Man was shit, by the way. Which one? The first the one. Original? The original? I thought it was shit. <laughs> I like I watched it and I was like, "What? What <laughs> is that? Really?" I had to check. I was like, "Is this definitely the Wicker Man that everyone goes on about?" Wow! Didn't, didn't I thought you. I, I I thought for sure you were going to say the Nicolas Cage one. That's the obvious no, take. No, but no, you're saying me. the original one's garbage. It, it just I just literally was like, "This was so shit." <laughs> like, it was, were you just bored? I was just so bored, and it ended. I was like, yeah. "Right, all right." <laughs> like, like from from the I, second the film started, it was like I can I know what's going to happen. Um, <laughs> and honestly, I didn't really know the story. Like, I've never really paid attention to it. So it wasn't, like, obvious, obvious. But I was like, yeah, this guy is getting fucking strung up. I don't know, man. I don't know what it was. I think because people... Have, maybe because so many people have said to me, like, you will love the Wicker Man. Is that something people that... say? People go up to you and say, you will love the Wicker oh, Man? Oh, it's you day. specifically? <laughs> Over yeah, there. Really... Yeah, that movie's huge in, in like, the in UK. England? I don't know I don't uh, know why. It's like, it's like a... Well, I don't know why. It's not... I don't I don't hate it, but it's like a staple of like British filmmaking or whatever. Do you know what? That's I think... why I say it's shit. Actually it's fine. But the fact that people <laughs> say that it's like a staple of No 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 no. Don't back it up now like Hans did with the, the documentary. No, you gotta stick by it. <laughs> Um, uh, I think uh, the issue with those movies is that we've been exposed to so many other movies that just take elements from those old movies that you kind of figure it out. Sure. So I feel like if if you had seen the movie when it came out, or maybe you know around those times, it would have been more impactful and more. I don't I don't know where this is going, but now since every movie it's like a little bit of a element from this one, an element from the other one, you already know where everything's going. So you know it's what? more difficult. To, I, I, I had this exact thought only yesterday, and I think this might actually be why uh, the feeling when no girlfriend is actually probably popular is because I don't think there's American filmmakers that have really anything interesting to say with their movies anymore. They just want to repeat things that have already been made and make it cool and fl like do the Stranger Things uh, thing, I, I guess, in different varying ways. And uh, that might be the refreshing thing with that documentary is because it does offer something that is completely different from what people who are generally invested in this medium are used to. Yeah. Well, that's the uh, thing. That's the thing that happened to me with the uh, Romero episode that we did. You know, he, Oh Romero yeah, we did a Romero a of... episode with Don Jolly. Don Jolly came back on the show. Yeah, I listened. Oh no, the first one was that Korean one. I listened to that. Yeah. yeah. He, we uh, we did a second one. Oh cool. He has a, he has a lot of small movies like very character pieces, but I guess, uh, again, like I've, I've just been exposed to so much media that something like that is not really engaging to me anymore. So it's difficult for me to get involved into or with a movie like that where, you know, the filmmaking is maybe a little bit archaic because of the time, which will work then. But now because we've consumed so much media, it doesn't have the same impact as those old movies had when they came out. Same with something like The Exorcist. Like, I, I think the first time I ever saw The Exorcist, I was like 20 so I never got the I never got the oh the scariest movie of all time because I was like this corny this kind of that is, lame that film you know, was a joke to me. Oh my it god! Never, it never... You two were terrible. That traumatized me at age nine. I still think it's the scariest movie. <laughs> well, I I watched the film Seven when I was seven. This is how crazy my dad is. Yeah, I was like he got it from the I don't know he had a video and it said Seven on it. Obviously, I was like oh I'm seven. Can I watch it? My dad was like. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Like, and I remember watching it being like, and I didn't know until I was an adult that you don't actually see the head because I remember like putting my head under the cover because I yeah. didn't see a seven yeah. head. And then I watched it terrified. Again last year and was like, oh, <laughs> like, that's just, what I mean by what's in the box. Like I just didn't never click, you know. But the next you grew one. up, grew up terrified of closed boxes. <laughs> yeah. a little bit. I love that. Christmas film. is yeah. a terrifying time. Was that the first real, like, extreme R-rated movie you were exposed to as a kid? Yeah, man. Yeah, definitely. But I remember really thinking that I think that's part of what gave me, like, an interest in serial killers and the kind of darker side of things in a way in terms of media because I remember watching it and just thinking how fucking cool it was that, that I was like, wow, this de detective is trying to find out this stuff and it's so cool. And then it gets to the scene where the guy, you know where the guy is like uh, glutton, right? Where he's been pumped full of food. 
and that stayed with me for so long. I remember just yeah. being like, that is the nastiest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> and also the scene where there's all the fucking like little, um, I think the one that starred and they're like, the hand is cut off, but then they're alive and he like comes up. That yeah. shit scared the fucking life out of me. I remember seeing um, in, a, in a car, seeing the little uh, Christmas tree thing in someone's car and just being like, fuck that film. Like, it just scared the shit out of me forever. But uh, yeah, it was a good film. Yeah, and that's another one that holds up uh, just Definitely as well. Holds up. Yeah, yeah. Brad Pitt is so sick. I think though. I really rate him. Out of all the mainstream actors, like I really rate him, man. What do you? Th- did you see Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? No, I've not seen it yet, man. I, I don't like the look of it actually. I'm not. I like um, Tarantino's films, but uh, I just I'm not really. Should I watch it? I think, I, in my opinion, um, that was probably that might be his best movie. Really. Okay. Yeah, it's it's not a whole lot like uh, any of his other movies. It's not like super extreme with the violence. Mm. Like the last fifteen minutes is, mm. but everything <laughs> yeah, up until about then. To say. <laughs> I was yeah, about to say what? <laughs> I mean, there's like a woman who has her face caved in on a fireplace. But I mean, aside from that, it's uh, it's like a good like buddy drama piece uh, that explores like uh, essentially the death of classic Hollywood. Really, I'll I'll check it out then. I remember watching, I, I loved, me and my best friend when I was young, we loved Kill Bill. And then I watched Kill Bill again, like, maybe a year ago. And I was just like, uh, it's kind of cheesy. It's kind of cheesy. Yeah, it didn't age well for me. Like, well, I'm obsessed with the fucking Safdie brothers now. Like, you put me onto that. Like, I watched Good Time. I've seen Good Time, like, three times Yeah, you, you, can, you can say, thanks to me, that you were into the Safdie brothers before it was cool. Everybody, well, I, everybody learned about yeah. them with Uncut Gems. But I fucking told my time. friend to watch Good Time. And like, then when Uncut Gems came out, he told me, he's like, hey, you know that, them guys you're talking about? They've got a new film out. I'm like, sick. But I really, I love that. I just think they're sick, man. Like, they're the future, I think, of... Uh, I'm really worried, though, they'll end up doing something too mainstream and just get boring, Rich. I think they're already on that path. If you take a look at just Uncut Gems, like the cast in general, they have some really interesting actors in there that probably weren't getting work otherwise, like Judd Hirsch or Eric Bogosian. Um, But I think if there's too much of an allure to working with famous faces like uh, Mm. The Weeknd or somebody, like then you're not going to see as many Buddy (laughs) Duress types or uh, any of the heroin addicts from Heaven Knows What that have been like such like interesting, cool characters in the backgrounds of of these movies. And if that happens, then they lose their style. They lose their substance and people won't be as interested. So you're saying you don't want to see the Safdies Captain Marvel too? <laughs> oh man! I you know what they have been approached to do some Marvel movies, but they've said no. Are you far. joking? It's yeah, true. Good time. You, Good no, time. You, got them in the door with uh, to I think do like Doctor Strange or some shit. Are you are you winding me up? But they said no. They're not like, going to do it. Fuck Marvel is just the, the, the death of cinema for me. It, yeah. <laughs> It's so we, we've true. complained way too much about Marvel on like really? every single podcast. It just, every conversation devolves no, into I how... I don't think it's enough. How it's dead. <laughs> 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 oh, man, it's so bad. Like, every time I see... I, there's a friend I had from school, and then, like, you know when you lose touch with someone and you see them online or whatever, and he just had, like, Marvel tattoos all up his oh, arm. No. Like, <laughs> fuck. And, like, just Captain America shield finished. on his forearm. Yeah, like, that is done. That is definitely done. Ah. Uh, you know, like, grown men that really are, like, way too into, like, comic book fandom. It's like, nah, it's fuck. And they're constantly trying to, like, like it's cool now. It's cool. We're finally accepted. It's like, nah, man. Your wife hates It's mainstream now. now. Your wife is just Uh-oh. there, like, oh, fuck. <laughs> what have I done? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I just, the, the films are fucking trash. Like, it's so shit. I don't get it. I never understand it, man. But nah, I like to... They're for kids. Gems, but I know... What you, yeah, they're for kids. But I know what you they're mean. They're for kids, that, that's like, it. Um, that like you can tell they're they're drawn to famous people, you know. You can really mm-hmm. feel that actually. Now you say it. The black girl in maybe it's the young black girl in um, Good Time. Good Time. She is fucking brilliant, I think. And I looked her up, and she's doing like nothing because I was like, oh, she's got yeah. Be in that's some that's what ha- that's what happens with all of these people they find around New York. They either go to jail or they don't do a thing afterwards. Why? It's ki- it's kind of scummy, in my opinion, for yeah, them to like. I like it. I mean, I guess they they have no obligation to like keep employing these people, and it's sure, but... totally on on the individual to make something of their own career. But I don't know the way that they pick like 
people up like the the woman uh who starred in heaven knows what her name is escaping me at the moment uh and like used her story to build a movie and all that and then just kind of like threw her to the wayside something about that rubs me the wrong way a little bit about them i think that's how you get ahead in hollywood right you'd be ruthless yeah. and horrible <laughs> or Peter Parker. That works really well when you, well, I guess when you cast the right people because The Wire did that a lot where they would just get gangbangers and just cast them as regular gangbangers in the show and it's, look at how good of an actor this person is and it's so natural because that's who they are. Uh, so that works really well. It's shitty that, you know, they don't follow up with them again. You're going to be at like the same Barcat time, Abdi. Yeah, yeah. But if it's a crackhead, like how, how can you convince a crackhead to stay mm. clean so they can be on your yeah. next movie too, right? Like, it's like, I'm going to pay you this amount that you're probably going to go through in like a month and then I'm going to have to find you again, I guess, for my next movie. Like, yeah, you know, that's that's what happens with the real people. That's right? you, you still haven't found that guy, right, buddy? Um, so he he's still he's still in prison as far as I know. <laughs> um, but I know his his real name now. Yeah. So, I mean, that's something, right? Yeah, you could write. Just, just got to play the waiting game. Uh, <laughs> Go pick him up when he comes out. Double years. Yeah. He's such a Go pay him a visit. Actor, man. He's, like, he's great. He has the kind of face that you can look at all day. Like, uh, you, you know what I mean? He's a very interesting guy to look at. He just, I don't know. It's it's hard to explain. He's, he's very interesting. I, I think I saw his Instagram and he's like boxing and shit as well. He just seems like a fucking wild guy. Yeah. Like a young Stallone. Yeah, yeah. If If... St- Stallone was ravaged by drugs. Yeah, he, he's yeah. like ugly in a very attractive way, which might sound crazy, but you know, some people are very, they're ugly, but they're also very attractive to look at. It's hard to explain. Like handsome, but ugly. I don't know. It's, it's a weird look. Like uh, yeah. I think um, Bukowski has it, you know, like Charles Bukowski. Uh, uh, and it's, I don't know, it's, he's like that, man. Like he's fucking, I like people like that. They, like Hollywood is so chiseled, everything's so fucking chiseled. Like you don't believe anything anyone is saying anymore. I don't. I'm just like bullshit. You haven't seen shit, you know. Which it's is strange terrible. because um, who's that guy from Twilight? Pattinson. Like he, yeah. uh, he's really believable in Good Time. He looks like a fucking fucked up, and he's just wrecked. Like he actually does a really good job of it. I was gonna say it's terrible when people like that go so Hollywood and then they, uh, you know, shave off all the rough edges of themselves that actually like produce their character. Like somebody I think about uh, frequently who would fit that mold is Hannibal Burris. Like Hannibal yeah. Burris, when he was uh, at the top of his game as a comedian, you know, he funny. was like stumbling over his words. He was just kind of extremely low energy, just fat and uh, mumbling into the microphone. And now, you know, he's confident in himself and he's yeah, lost some yeah. weight and he's trying to be like a good looking guy. It's like, nobody cares about you anymore. You, you ruined your whole, your, your personality here. It means Eric nothing, Andre, not funny anymore. Eric Andre to an extent as well. Like he's done yeah. too much normal shit now for me. I still love all the old shit, but it's like, yeah, he's a normal guy now. You know what I mean? Not that shocking anymore. Yeah. But the think, same I thing. A... I was going to say the same thing happened with Tim Heidecker of Tim and Eric. Oh, like they go so mainstream enough. Tim I can't enjoy this the in, same way. Right? He, you realize he had to fit into like the resist crowd, and he just fucked that's the up. that's a tragedy. Yeah, is, yeah, is yeah, him going so political with it, and it like tints everything he does now. Mm. Tim and Eric is so is still so good, man. I tell you who else? Uh, um, ben Affleck. Ben Affleck looked cool when his teeth looked like crackhead teeth, and he, <laughs> I've seen this picture where it's like before and after. And it was, it was like, uh, I don't know, it was like replacing a picket fence with a fucking barrier wall. Like his teeth were destroyed. And then he just got this crazy set of like perfect white gnashes, <laughs> just like, wham, put in his mouth and shit. And uh, he looked like, you know, if you, if you look at him in, um, oh, fuck, man, it's like my favorite film. What is it? Go the what? Hunting? Go Will Hunting? If you, if you look at him in that, like he's got like his jaw is not quite right. He's got a bit of an underbite. He's a, rel- yeah. like, he's a believable good looking but like fucked up guy now he's not fully formed yet yeah now he's just like jennifer lopez's ex-husband with a shit dragon tattoo but he's still smoking all the time it's quite funny every time you see him yeah fucking chain smoking he's got such like a 1950s actor's body where he's got like man boobs but he's also (laughs) jacked at the same time it's like a guy that goes to the gym um, but doesn't watch his diet. But he eats <laughs> you know Big Macs. I mean? Yeah, yeah, after yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like he's getting been, the muscles, but the weight as well. I've been Very watching true. so many of his earlier films recently because uh, I've been 
And like, uh, like I, like I mentioned before, I've been hopping in and out of like directors' filmographies, and I'm in Kevin Smith, and he's in like every single Kevin Smith film throughout yeah, the '90s. I so I, forgot I, about I that. yeah, so I, I totally know what you're talking about in terms of like that gradual transition into what he is now. I did, I watched his new movie that came out recently, The Way Back, which is essentially just like his own attempt at PR for his image, where he plays a drunk, and he's trying to get you know, his life in order and he's trying to fix himself and then he blows it. He gets uh, drunk at, at work and he works for a Catholic school. And uh, anyway, there's no real resolve there. He just mm. winds up getting fired and has to deal with it. He doesn't even show up to like the team makes the championship. He doesn't go to the game or anything. He just mm. like stares out his window or something. I don't know. That's been Affleck's life. I'd love to make a <laughs> film. that was, I wish I had loads of money. I'd make fiction films, but like, like you said, I would make yeah, like films without a resolution is if it if it's done right, I don't know, it's just fucking cool, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, like in I, the feeling when no girlfriend, there's no resolution. Well, not quite with that. Life. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> At least with a fiction film, there's a big story behind it, you know. Like Fight Club's kind of like that, which is a weird thing to like. I love Fight Club. It's the only film I've seen where the the film is better than the book. But um, mm-hmm. the, I don't know. Like it's kind of at the end, it's it's not really. He's just not crazy anymore, but he's still completely fucked. I don't know. I thought that was a good film. People try to shit on that movie and that book. So I mean, they. I feel like a lot of the academic types or like the snobby film goers or, or readers try to dismiss the audience for that. Of course. Um, it's one of the Alan best things ever made, in my opinion. But yeah, I think that's one of Fincher's strongest movies. And yeah. um, another one that's like that where I view... The movie is better than uh, its source material would probably be American Psycho, which came out around the same time. That I know book you, is you're fucking shit. Brett Easton Ellis's style of writing is very like hit or miss depending on the book, and yeah, I uh, like I, that one, that one in Less Than Zero, you know, they're they're two of my favorite <laughs> movies that were adapted from his work, but the books themselves. You know, I thought Less Than Zero was decent. I thought the film was terrible. I th- well, he, I saw the film before I read the book, so I had uh, no idea what the book was like. The but now I, I go back and I'm like, well, this is just like an 80s teen film. This is The yeah. Breakfast Club mm. Part 2. You know? But with drugs. Breakfast Club with yeah. drugs, right. yeah. The thing with um, I like American Psycho, it was just like nastiness for the sake of nastiness, I think. And, and then Imperial Bedrooms, which I read, which is the Less Than Zero sequel, right? It's like when Clay is grown up. It's ridiculous. Nothing happens. Have you read it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's ridiculous, right? Nothing happens until like the last chapter. And then they like Where he's suddenly a killer and you didn't know it the entire and, and, time. And and he like puts two kids in a cage and sh- one of them shits themselves. It's just the most I, I remember finishing that book and just <laughs> feeling <laughs> sick. <laughs> no, like it's the most horrible fucking book. It's like it's so pointless. The whole book is so pointless. Now I mean, Less Than Zero, the book, has some, like, really dark elements to it. There's, mm. like, a child pornography aspect, and, mm. like, the pimping with Julian and all that is, is much darker in the book than it is in the movie. Yes. In the movie, it's just, like, implied he might have sucked some guy's dick, and then he's mm. trying to, like, you know, he gets rescued by Clay. Uh, there's, there's no setup at all. There's no, like, warning in Less Than Zero, or Imperial Bedrooms, even. That it's gonna take the turn that it does. It's just oh yeah. s- surprise, he's a sociopath. All of a sudden, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you read the whole book, you're like, right, his life is shit, kind of. <laughs> it's like two kids are in a cage. You're like, whoa, 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 <laughs> like what? <laughs> Why you got two kids in a cage? Like it's yeah, it's fucked up, man. It's very. But one thing, less than zero was good for me. I guess I read it when I was like fucking nineteen or something. Like I just didn't know about that side of Hollywood like ever until I read that book, you know, I didn't know that, that all that mad shit existed. And then it was like, actually, no, I was much younger. I was probably like 17 when I read that. And I was like, oh, okay, like, fuck, there's this really dark element to that whole part of America, which is obvious now as an adult, but, you know, I was dumb as fuck. So for me, it was very good in that sense. Like, maybe if I read it now, I wouldn't like it, but I don't know. I remember, I remember reading the bit that made me really, was like, oh, this is good, is when every time he goes in his room, he puts MTV on and puts it on mute. And for some reason, that was something I used to do, you know, like as a kid, I would, not MTV, but I'd put something on and I just had to have the TV on, even if it was on mute. Otherwise, I felt lonely. Like, it's so weird, you know, stuff like yeah. that. So that sort of stuff, I think he was, he's good at bringing that out, like things. That, but then, but then he's, he's always, I mean, that guy in real life, I think has just done some terrible shit. <laughs> I really do believe that, you know. 
Who, Brad Easton Ellis? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I reckon so. Uh, I'll tell you what. There's actually, when he was doing his podcast, when he started like in 2013 or something, whenever the Brian Singer allegations first came up, I feel like he was talking about, well, you know how Brian Singer, the director of X-Men and Bohemian Rhapsody, how he's been outed for having like 16, 15, 14-year-old boys at his parties. They drug up and they pass around. Right. Um, I feel like I remember something on his podcast where he was talking about, he might have been talking to Milo or somebody like that, about how he had gone to a party like this in Hollywood and seen how one party evolved into another party the later the guests uh, stayed at this person's house or whatever. So he was very well aware of that scene and kind of on the podcast, he wound up dismissing it like is like not a big deal. And I always, oh, wow. that, that always felt weird to me that he did that. I don't know where you can find this podcast now. He's taken it off of iTunes. Uh, you can only be a patron uh, now to find these episodes, but this was all before like uh, me too and shit. Um, there's so, so much shit out there that needs to be unearthed with that, yeah. that kind of stuff, man. It's it's all entirely possible, um, but in terms of imperial bedrooms, there's a book now. There's um, a book called White now. That book is uh, it's 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 okay, but it's a lot of it's a lot from his podcast because he writes Isn't open it like, monologues. Pull me, pull me. You weren't a fan. No, I, I didn't read it, but I, from what I read, I read about the synopsis. It just seemed to be him being like, "Pull me. Why can't I just be horrible?" <laughs> I don't know. I just, <laughs> Didn't isn't Brian Singer now uh, Oscar winner Brian Singer? I think he's always been Oscar winner Brian Singer. What uh, did he win before? I don't know. Some because he won for Bohemian Rhapsody, right? It it won some stuff. I think it won best editing. editing. Think, okay. Yeah, that film joke. was fucking terrible. You know about the I Queen haven't. film, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. With yeah, uh, was Rami Malek. I watched about 15 minutes of it, to be fair, and I was like, why, why am I doing this? What am I doing? <laughs> Turn it off. <laughs> this is a joke, man. Turn out that my granddad, who's a huge fan of Queen, this is really funny. Like, when Queen came out, like, when he was youngish, he was like, ah, bullshit, I don't like that. And then when he was older, like, when he was, like, fucking 70, he must have heard Queen and was like, wow, they're amazing. Like, why did I listen to them before? So he became, like, a like Queen fan when he was in his 70s. And then he went to him and my grandma went to watch the film at the fucking cinema and they loved it, so whatever. But I was like, really? Like, I thought it was terrible. They were talking about doing a shared universe of those movies with the Elton John Rocket Man movie. <laughs> I'm not even joking. That was that was an idea. Or like Marvel, but cool. Yeah. Or the li- yep. Liberace. <laughs> the Liberace. Well, that, that was Michael Douglas. That was Matt Damon and Michael Douglas. Uh, Soderbergh did that movie. That movie's great. It's a fucking weirdo. Creep liberation. Are there any um? Are there any good films that I should be watching that are like more underground shit, man? Like because you know I got I I have I can't remember the last time I saw like a, a big film come out and like wanted to watch it other than um, Uncut Gems. Hmm. Hans, any off the top of your head? I I feel like I've suggested some to you just like over the past uh, year or so. I don't want to throw any uh, repeated ones out there, but uh, let me think about that. Yeah, I've watched most of the ones you said, like most of them were sick. Yeah, nothing really off the top of my head, to be honest. There's nothing I've good I've been that's... watching a lot of old shit. Yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. All, all the movies I, I've been I'm watching have been from the 70s. Yeah, so I'm always re-watching stuff I've already watched. I don't know why I do that. Yeah, on the topic of uh, brutal rape scenes, Straw Dogs is a great movie. Sam Peckinpah. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, I, don't want, I don't want to watch any of them. Ah, well. <laughs> <laughs> Straw Dogs, yeah. Straw Dogs is, uh, it was, was amazing. I bought a used DVD of that off of eBay for like $11, and I was so glad I did. It was probably the best movie I've watched in quarantine. Really? Yeah, oh, it's yeah, about like, it uh, Dustin Hoffman's like an academic, neoliberal type guy in like a, a relationship with this woman. They move back to her hometown in England, um, like some really like rural uh, part like what would whatever would be the equivalent to like the south in america like they don't seem right, like very intellectual right. people very like hillbilly types mm-hmm. um and she has like her ex-boyfriend and his gang of like goons or whatever work on their house and these guys just like go out of their way to taunt dustin hoffman and his wife and i it winds up resulting in like uh like a self-defense uh home environment situation that uh, escalates and gets pretty out of control. But it's really great. It's a really great movie. Terrible remake with James Marsden. Awful. Was, Never watched the I remake. Was... <laughs> okay. Cool, cool. I like Pusher. Your favorite, when I, James when I said, Martin. hey, go watch Pusher, and you watched the wrong Pusher movie. 
mate. I was so, he was telling me that. I was like, this film is so shit. And I was like, it, it's got to get better. It's got to no, no the movie's minutes. so bad. <laughs> it was about 40 minutes. And I was like, this cannot be the right film. Like, Wait, what's I still the American? haven't found the other one to watch, man. I, I fucking... I, uh, is there a link? You sent me a link? They, they, one, two, three movies probably has it. The, the UK. Probably, but they always change the fucking URL. Yeah. The, it, I think it's one, two, three, three movies dot ST. Oh, ST now, yeah. yeah I, 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 I just got done watching The Trip with Steve Coogan and uh, Rob Rydron from there. So I'm, yeah. I'm feeling confident. Um, mm. Yeah, the UK Pusher movie. Holy shit. You couldn't it's have watched so a bad. worse film. It, it's one of the worst <laughs> films I've ever seen in my life. It's, 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 it's somehow awful. Brits have like Brit. It's made by Brits, right? And the yeah. actors are British. Yet somehow, it, nothing about it feels British. It's so fucking weird. It's like so strange. It it was very upsetting to watch that movie after like I binge watched all three uh, of the Pusher films that Refn made, and then I watched that, and I was like, wow, these people don't get this movie at all. Like they bought the property after Drive came out, and they were like, we're gonna make it like Drive. And they didn't even really do that. It was just a piece of shit. It's not even nearly like driving. No. It's so bad. Also, Fucking... the dealer is like, he makes all this money, but also it kind of, it doesn't live, seems to be broke, but it also isn't broke. Like, the whole thing is fucking weird. Yeah. Like, they've never met a drug dealer in their life, I think, whoever made it. Like, no, the, fucking strange. the actual movie from 96, I, I, it feels like so, like, urban 90s, cool, Real. fast-paced, yeah. gritty, guerrilla filmmaking style. It's so well done. Uh, especially for the, the first film. Good. Yeah, it's fucking mm. dope. Um, and I, you know, they, they remade it in the UK and they remade it in India. And the, like the Bollywood version is more authentic to that original pusher, wow. except at the end that of the... That sounds pretty cool, actually. At the end of the Indian version, instead of there being like a natural resolve uh, between the they drug dance. dealer and, and the lead character... No, they don't even dance. It's like God intervenes and shows the main character the proper way of life and how he should be. Whoa, and uh, yeah. then he goes on like a killing streak and kills all the bad guys or something. I don't know. Great. It gets crazy at the end. Uh, what's, um, what's, uh, what's his name? Refn? Is he making anything new? Yeah, he's, he's working on... Um, he had a movie in production that I think is being held up now because of quarantine. And um, he's working on an HBO show called Maniac Cop. Which is based on that old, <laughs> old movie. Oh, hell yeah, I love that. That movie. was that was that was the first horror movie that I got exposed to. Maniac Cop Three. It was at the dollar store. I tricked my mom into thinking it was like cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Maniac Cop. You know, just like yeah. Pink Panther. Yeah, yeah. That sounds um, that sounds funny. <laughs> Maniac Cop. What was his latest film that's out? I think I missed it. So he did he did the Neon Demon in 2016, I and that feels that. more like. That feels more like Drive than I think uh, a lot of his films do. What, do. what did you think of that? It was it was okay. Um, the scene where she vomits out the finger is is literally nearly made me throw up, man. I don't <laughs> know why. Like like I said, I'm not squeamish, but something just made me like oh, like when she sticks the finger up. Yeah. But it was it was alright. Like Keanu Reeves is in it, right? Yeah, he's got a, a random cameo as a motel owner. <laughs> That's <laughs> really strange. I didn't like that because when when like you get like famous people doing like random cameos, it really distracts me. I'm like, what the why? Like, what the fuck? I don't really want to see that. But yeah, it was fine. I guess I preferred yeah. it to um your favorite film. Only I God forgives. Forget. I got I got to rewatch that one. I'll tell you what. I watched. <laughs> uh, I I expressed my my disdain for his series to you, Jake. But I watched Too Old to Die Young, which is like a 14 hour long Amazon series. And it's uh -huh. it, it's really the most self indulgent thing I've I've ever seen. Maybe anyone do. I was I was actually looking that up, and the first review on IMDb, the first line is, "I get it." <laughs> <laughs> Which I guess just says everything you need to know about any of his productions. I guess yes. it's just like yeah. all right. Any, anytime anyone has anything? ever <laughs> criticized him, that was that was my response to that series. Like I I I know where people are coming from now. Because it, it, it's literally just like, how about, like with his movies, it's like, all right, we're going to linger on this shot for 14 seconds. Yeah. With the Amazon yeah. series, it's more like, we're going to linger on this shot for three and a half minutes. Oh, fuck. And Was it called Too Old to Die Young? Too Old to Die Young. Okay. There's maybe... Just, just for lols. There's, there's maybe one really good episode and the rest, can't recommend it. I really can't. What's the, what's the like, what's it about? 
It's I don't even know, man. Miles like Teller it's it, Miles Teller's a cop who I think kills somebody and then uh his partner is mistaken for him and they kill his partner and then he goes to get retribution on the guy and then he does it, it's a whole lot of like just pointless news. Um are you are, are you into Reffin's arch nemesis uh, Lars von Trier at all? Mm, I mean, I watched Nymphomaniac just because I think at the time I was just like young, horny widow. Um, <laughs> Same. And, and then watched I was, it and was, I was like, oh, this is, it, it, this this film is feels sticky. Like, it's not, yeah. <laughs> it's really it not sexy. It's horrible. Um, and I remember just thinking like, who has this kind of weird, not not like weird, it was just like gross sex. And I don't mean like in a prudish way. I was just like, it just feels gross. Like, it doesn't seem like anyone's enjoying themselves. You know, I didn't like it. It was, um, yeah. Wash so, your feet. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Like, <laughs> shave. Get a shave. And fuck, man. Like, don't have the lights on full blast if your lights look like the fucking supermarket. And yeah, like, it just, the whole thing was just a little bit grubby for me. Yeah. Um, and I don't, you know, that grubby side of it was... I get it, like, I get it, but again, it was just like, okay, was really, is that why you've made a film, just to be like, look how grubby this is? Like, Yeah, in two volumes, I'm trying to, just like Kill Bill. In most two of his, volumes, yeah, I didn't watch the same. Most of his films have that feeling, though, that feeling of like, ugh. Antichrist Christ. is really bad, as far as that goes. Like, that goes over the top, and he films it so beautifully, but it's like, yeah. he's yeah. jacking off his it's dick, like, and then blood comes like, out. I don't need art. I don't uh, need a... You know, a two-minute shot of fucking Willem Dafoe's balls <laughs> with water glistening on them. Like, thank you. I it was guess. like a perfume <laughs> no, commercial. Not... Shit like yeah, that. Yeah, like, but it's just you, his They ass. think they're so clever. You know, like, they just think, like, oh, this is so... I feel like they've got so lost in their own hubris, they, they don't know what is good and clever anymore. It's yeah. like, whatever I do will be good. And it's like, nah, man. Like, they need someone there that's not scared of them that goes, stop fucking doing this. David Lynch needed that when he made uh, Twin Peaks 2. It's appalling. Like it, I'm a huge, huge Twin Peaks fan, um, and the the sec, you know, the new series he did, well, not two, but whatever it is, the new series he did like four years ago, three years ago, mm. is just so shit, um, and it doesn't make sense, and everyone like diehard fans of his are like, wow, he's a genius. I'm like, is he, or does he just not have enough people around him telling him when to shut up? Really it's a little of both, I think. I don't know. I don't. I yeah, really I enjoyed that last season of Twin Peaks. I can't agree with you there. I, I don't know. I think I have a higher tolerance for uh, for just um, you know self indulgence, maybe. Maybe, but I, I tell you what, it was. It just didn't. I, I'm a, I'm very like I live in the past. I lo love nostalgic shit. So maybe it just didn't feel. It did. Like, no, it it yeah, was nothing like Twin Peaks, the original yeah, show. Which is, I wanted it to be very similar. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. maybe that's why. I'll tell you what, um, I just rewatched The House That Jack Built last night. That was Lars von Trier's film. You love that film. film, right? I think that's his best movie. And, yeah, um, I need to watch it. Really funny, really darkly funny. Uh, uh, great, great movie. I, you know, if you want to check that out. He's a great actor out, as well, I think. I, I, I think even if you didn't like Nymphomaniac, it, The House That Jack Built is really, like, it, it's him maturing, I think. Although he does have like a good 15 minute segment towards the end of that movie where he just starts referencing his own movies and gets very indulgent and like criticizes uh, his uh, critics by like not speaking about in himself film? in the film. He's, he's oh. speaking to um, like Virgil from, from art and the Bible and, and stuff. Uh. He's the main character. He's talking about uh. art and criticism and obscenity in art. And then he just does a show reel of his movies, like Europa and <laughs> Infomania and Don't Call. Don't call. Yeah. <laughs> like he, it's a very funny movie, though, in my opinion. Yeah, it's about a serial killer, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, Matt yeah. Dillon plays a serial killer. He's in great. The 70s he's great. Anything. He's awesome in the movie. He's very funny. He's kind of an outsider, isn't he? Or at least in that yeah. film, like he's not. Yeah, like he yeah, doesn't he's, normally play those kind of roles. He's very peculiar. And his his career is like kind of boring otherwise. Except so yeah. this film is like very unlike anything he did before. I love when that happens, when like an actor like I, my friend told me about, you know, when Matthew McConaughey just started making cool shit. Yeah. And it was called like the McConaissance or something when he yep, just yeah. went from being like boring rubbish to doing like really dark cool shit. I love that because there's so many times where I've been like that actor shit. And then you see them in the right role, I'm like, fuck. That's great. Like he, like, like fucking 
What's his name in um in Uncut Gems? Sandler. Sandler? Yeah. Sandler. Everybody, I fucking everybody hate was hating everything. on Sandler for the longest time. He does Uncut Gems, and now everybody's like, well, you know, this is good, but also like Big Daddy's pretty good. And You're right. Spanglish <laughs> is good. No, Big, Big Daddy is actually all right, actually. Like, yeah. And and I do like um what's the fucking what's the one the comedy one where he's like rich kid on a golf course. Oh, um, uh, Happy Gilmer. Happy, Billy Madison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, no, is, Billy Madison. Happy, Billy yeah. Madison. Oh, Billy yeah. Madison. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. Both of those are classic. Those are '90s gems. Mm. I watched uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off like last year as well, which seems to be from that same period. Mm-hmm. Weird as fuck. John <laughs> Hughes, God. 1980s. Um, Hans, didn't you say you weren't like you'd never seen a John Hughes film before? No, I've seen them. I just don't like them. <laughs> right. I've seen, I've seen like half of breakfast. It's just a. You went on like no, but you life. went on a rant about like the Breakfast Club and Ferris Bueller in those movies, didn't you? Yeah, but I don't remember what the rant was because I my memory is horrendous. But I, it's just a life that I just it's foreign to me, so I can't really get mm, into mm. any of their lives because it's just like that's not my. Yeah, that was never my life experience. So it's like oh, cool. deported from America, from New Mexico, yeah, at age three or something. Exactly. Right? Where's my movie, John Hughes? <laughs> I want to have detention. What the fuck is that? We don't have detention in my high school. <laughs> you just get yelled at by your teacher. That's it. So I, that's why I was never able to connect with his suburban characters. That was always like, you know, the biggest drama is that the jock in school didn't call me or say my name or whatever. Well, I mean, <laughs> I don't, I don't get it. You're, 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 you're Mexican, right? You, you didn't relate to like Emilio yeah. Estevez in The Breakfast Club? No, because he's no. Oh. <laughs> I don't even know. Is he Latino? You didn't in look there? at him like, and say, "Hey, that's me." He's no. He's oh. hiding his heritage, just like in everything. <laughs> he's not. Charlie Sheen is. Estevez. He's proud of it. Oh yeah, and that's oh, why yeah. he doesn't have a fucking career. That's yeah. why he. Where is he? Yeah, he's doing <laughs> Mighty Duck Six right now. Yeah, exactly. yeah. But look at Charlie Sheen. Like, like spreading yep. AIDS his, on purpose. <laughs> his brother <laughs> too well for him. Yeah, his brother has AIDS, but at least people remember who he is. You know, what the fuck is Emilio? Nobody cares. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that shit. I, I heard about this not long ago, actually. He's yeah, not even he on doing cameo. Like, I think he's doing like Mighty Ducks Four or something for Disney Plus or some shit. Oh God, oh, cameo! That is so funny, man. You know, I was trying Bob to get Eric Jared, Roberts. Man. For, for this movie we're working on trying to get er- yeah. Eric Roberts who works for very little money didn't reply to my emails at all I go on cameo.com he's doing messages for 70 bucks <laughs> you just can't be bothered like, you just can't be bothered like Bam Majira is like main source of income seems to be cameo yeah like, hey dude jump off a tree man happy birthday <laughs> like, it's fucking funny man I don't know really, I tell you, you what cameos, you used them right yep you paid? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Comfort yeah, Systems, yeah, no, episode systems. one. Yeah, I forgot, yeah. Forgot about yep. that. Um, but, like, someone needs to write a piece about, like, how unbelievably tragic Cameo is, like, do you know what I mean? It's, it is. But there were people on there that are, like, fucking rich as shit. Like, Waka Flocka's on there. Like, he surely hasn't run out of that much money, you know? Like, fuck. But then I their think, ones are, like, $500 and shit. Yeah, the thing about that is, if like, there, there's certain people that, that, that have maintained a certain level of fame that'll go on mm. there and they know they can get like some rich kid's parents for like their 16th birthday to do a quick video for $800 or whatever it might be of them just saying hi, hello. But I mean, I use Cameo now as like a resource for like, hmm, who can I get for this movie? Who, who's the yeah, agent can idea. I get in touch with? Who's affordable? Who's, uh, who's going through a rough, <laughs> rough time right now? Exactly. $10 yeah. a message. Yeah. I've been looking at voiceover artists like, oh, uh, Dana Snyder from Aqua Teen Hunger Force, who, with the lead guy from Cowboy Bebop, twenty dollars cameos. Sign me up. All right, I think we are in business here. You know, he sounds cool as well. Oh, I'm boy. laughing, but that's what like ten years you're gonna see me on there. You're on camp. Yeah, you're gonna be on cameo <laughs> next week. Yeah, like, you know, I, I gotta like fucking feed my fucking benzodiazepine addiction or something. <laughs> Hey, it's me from Poppy the Front. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> hey, they have YouTubers on there already. I know that Justin Wang got a uh, proposition to be on Cameo. And I've really? seen people like Keemstar on there doing oh. videos. Keemstar might not be correct, now. but somebody like Keemstar, you know. Keemstar's finished, right? Like, he's just... There's some video that came out, and it's just like 10 minutes of him just being completely racist. Like, it's fucking crazy. To the, what, what's going on with PewDiePie again? He's in trouble, isn't he? Is he? Yeah, I don't know. I, don't know. I, I just see like Tim Probably. Pool recommended videos or something. I don't never click them. It's always like Democrat <laughs> mad at PewDiePie. I don't know. 
That's oh, my news. PewDiePie is, man, I watched um, one of his videos the other day. Like, every now and then it would come up, and I, I don't even know why. I'm like, all right, let's see what PewDiePie is doing. I don't even like him. I never did. You know what I mean? But sometimes I do. And he's like, uh, sometimes you're like, oh, this guy is quite funny. And then he yeah. does something, and you're like, this guy is a grown child. Like, he's a fucking baby. Like, it's just crazy what how much money he's made from just being, like, a man-child. You know, it's fucking, he's, he's a mold. He's set for guy. life. Yeah. He is, and his kids are, and their kids his are. His kids you know, are crazy, man. Yes, PewDiePie but, uh, is is royalty. He's uh, you know, he's got a legacy now. Legacy YouTube family. can't get rid of him either. Like they just can't. Like he's saying racist shit and stuff, and just you know, he was. I think I don't think he's racist, like a, an, an outright racist. I just think he's like a fucking weirdo that didn't. He hasn't grown up off of the internet. Like he hasn't realized that he's a grown man now because he hasn't really ever had to. You know, he's just like a fucking man child. Well. If it grows up, his his business dies. If it grows true, up, true, true. Yeah, we started reading. Really... He he, re- he did this video where he recommended books. Right, he was like, "Here's my recommended reading for the week," and I watched it. And uh, some of the books I read, and some of them were bullshit. But I was like, "This is this is quite interesting. This is like an interesting thing." And I, and then like next video, he was he's like on Minecraft, and he's like, yeah. Yeah, Ma- making his dog fuck another See, dog. It's like, wow. that, I mean, that, that, that's the thing. I think I think PewDiePie as a guy is probably pretty interesting and probably, yeah. um, uh, worth knowing about. But the content that he uh, fashions himself in is not not really my cup of tea. I used to really no like his either. his videos before he got deep into Minecraft, but mm. it's like all of that now. So he has no I'm effort out. either. Like you know, it's it's unbelievable how much money he earned. And he just, he still can't be bothered to make anything cool. That's what yeah. bothers me. Like, when these people get all of this money, and I'm thinking, like, make something cool. Like, but they just rather just sit at home and do fuck all. Like, most of the money we make from Popular Front goes into making other documentaries. It's why I drive a shit car still, you know? <laughs> like, yeah. it's because it's like, let's make more cool shit. Um, like, Comtown Boys, you know? Like, they make so much money from the podcast. And it's like, come on, God, make a sketch show. Fucking do <laughs> it. Like, do something. something. Yeah. Have you seen their attempt at doing like a sketch? No. They did one. They did, they did one. one for, it's like a two minute thing because they said that when they were going to start a Patreon, it was going to be to ex- for do extra content and they were going to do sketches or whatever. They did like a two minute sketch and they were it like, was the three of them <laughs> sitting together on a couch in some like empty apartment trying yeah. to be fun. One of them just... wearing a diaper. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... It was, yeah, it was they're, really like, not good. they're just maybe funny guys that are like uh, just funny if you're drunk at a bar, you know, and you're like 16. But I mean, I laugh at it now and then. It's quite funny. Is, is it that they're it's, funny it's nice or funny. that that Nick Mullen is funny and Stavros <laughs> laughs a lot? Yeah, Nick, Nick Mullen is actually <laughs> funny, you know, like he's a funny guy. Yeah. That Adam guy is funny because they make fun of him. Yeah. Stav is, he's actually funny in a way, but it's, it's, yeah, I don't know, man. It's a fucking weird stuff, but they make they make so much money. Mm-hmm. But it's a nice light relief, actually, it, and it's good to know that the, you're listening to someone that's funny, but actually isn't a fucking racist. <laughs> you know what I mean? That mm-hmm. does bother me when you someone says something funny and then you find yeah. out like, oh wow, he's uh, <laughs> he's like a fucking racist on in real yeah. life. I I have so, this problem yeah. anytime I talk to Hans. I just I I yep. feel terrible about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably associate with this guy. Um, I don't know. It's funny. We should probably wrap up here. I gotta get uh, dinner rolling. I've held my girlfriend hostage. She's been silent all this time. I said, "Don't turn the <laughs> fucking TV on. Don't turn the volume on on your computer. We gotta record this." So uh, I gotta go be a nice guy now. So cool, man. Uh, that's been that's been movies. I mean, we talked about. Oh, hold on a second. Is there any chance of a Popular Front feature length documentary about what? anything about anything? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Without a doubt, I just don't have the money. <laughs> that's my aim like i don't want to keep doing these small news reports you know like i do like a 20 minute 40 minute film i want to do like a big big like a fucking hour you know what i mean like something that you would see at south by southwest type well I, that's the where, where i was film. going with this would you ever submit yeah. something like that off to these festivals because i think oh, you yeah, could do yeah, exceptionally yeah, yeah. well i there, well, there's a plan i mean I, I don't want to talk about it on air as such i'll tell you about it but there's two films that i'm probably going to do that will be like that um you know one in europe that will cause a massive stink if it gets if it works and that i think is worth doing like a big proper thing for oh boy maybe 
<laughs> Boris Johnson. But it's money, the sex man. Tape. It, it's fucking money. <laughs> like, yeah. It's just money. You know what I mean? Like a lot of it is money because just staying somewhere for a certain amount of time is obviously what you need to do a feature length. And having the money to do that, man, we, we don't even make 10 grand on the Patreon or anything. You know what I mean? It's not mm. at that stage yet. I mean, I can just about live. And now I'm only at the stage where I don't have to do freelance work as well. You know, so it's just at that stage. It's not at the stage of, hey, we can pay a cameraman properly. Yeah, it's just, you know, so like Hong Kong, it's like, hey, I can pay your flight, but I can't give you a daily rate. It's just, I can't do it. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. But one day, man, one day. All right, well, I'm looking forward to that day happening. Uh, in the meantime, you got a new documentary coming out, so uh, keep mm. us all posted on that. And uh, until the next episode, which hopefully we'll have some more material to talk about the film itself, uh, that's been <laughs> movies. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Cheers, man.